200 laps, 500 miles of racing action coming your way here on Race Spot TV. Just in a moment's time with the Sim Racing Authority's Daytona 500, right after this. Motorsport disciplines have their race, which every driver wants to win. Single-seaters have the Monaco Grand Prix. IndyCar has the Indianapolis 500. And sports car racing, they have the Le Mans 24 hours. NASCAR has a race which every driver dreams of winning since they were a young child. And tomorrow evening, iRacer turned NASCAR driver William Byron will win up on pole position for that very race. For one weekend in February, a small Florida town will gain 200,000 people. That race is the Daytona 500. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. You are with Racebot TV, bringing you the Sim Racing Authority Daytona 500. Jack Styles alongside Noah Lewis and Gary Weaver bringing you 500 miles of action. Qualifying is underway, with each driver getting just one shot at setting a time. And Noah, that it's really gonna put pressure on the drivers to set that perfect lap time. Oh, it is. This race is such a big deal to all of these drivers. Qualifying is where it starts. You have to qualify. You don't have to. I mean, Daytona is a track where you can qualify in the back and be up front in a matter of laps. But these guys do want to sit on this pole. They do want to be up front to lead this field to the green flag. There is going to be a total of 30 cars bringing us around to this green flag and not the 43 cars we're used to seeing in NASCAR, Gary, but it's still a very good field and it's going to be very competitive up and down. Current pole sitter, Liam Botherton, but he has, or Brotherton, but he hasn't got that far behind. The gaps are very close here at Daytona and that's going to be very important. Yeah, the gaps at Daytona are important in terms of qualifying, but once the race gets underway, it's pretty much over, but you are correct in terms of setting that perfect lap time. If you qualify within the top half of the field, well, you're pretty much good to go, but you do have a whole other back half of the field right behind you once you get into that iconic first place by the end of this. And with just one minute left in qualifying, all the drivers are making sure they've got that time ready. 200 laps of racing, 500 miles. Noah, this is about survival because Every single time we come to Daytona, we see the big one. We see the big accident at some point. Each driver will get a fast repair at some point during this race in case they need it. But you want to be able to use that when you really need it, such as a big incident that we could see here today. Yeah, these drivers will definitely be considering what moves they can make, where they can go, who to go with, if they have someone they can work with, teammates, anybody. It is going to be something that they're going to have to look for and stay or steer clear of. This big one is inevitable usually here at Daytona, and we're going to have to see how these drivers steer around that and who ends up at the end of this thing. And that is going to be what we will know in about three to three and a half hours' time. We thank you very much for joining us here on Race Spot TV, wherever you may be in the world. The Daytona 500 always draws in amazing crowds, and we are going to take you down to the starting grid. Liam Brotherton will take the pole position on row one alongside him will be Lachlan McMillan 
in the Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Third place will go to the driver of Ethan Kurtz, and alongside him will be Tommy Cassette. Fifth place will be James Coolby with David Shutt in sixth, Ryan Hunt in seventh, Randy Roberts in eighth, Benjamin Nelson in ninth, and Connor Anton in tenth. Noah, take us through the next ten. Nick Northrup is in that 11th spot, Eric Sable in 12th, Brett Pancari in 13th, Robert Barris in 14th, Cameron Ledford in 15th, Garrison Hogan in 16th, Brad Bothwell in 17th, oh, excuse me, Robert Dudley in 18th, Nicholas Caressel in the 19th spot, and Riley Wyans in the 20th. Gary? On the, yeah, thanks, Noah. 21st is going to be Anthony Emery, Chris Deshong in the 22nd. 28th, third will be Femiola Bobby Cheney. It starts his outside in the 28th position, rounding out the top 25. It's car number 25, Tyler Ducharme. 26th place is Jeremy Dominique. Matt Simpson starts in the 27th place position. 28th, Elijah Drew Gracia. And 29th will be Austin Robertson, 77. Rounding out the field is David Fish in the position at number 30. An interesting thing to note as we have seen the qualifying times on your screen, ladies and gentlemen, is that the drivers from 23rd down did not set time, choosing to start this very long race from the back of the field. And Gary, that could be very important with the strategy and the cautions when we see them. That's going to help. Uh, it's going to help those drivers a lot for those that didn't qualify. It could definitely help, especially since they do have a little bit more reaction time and a little bit more space to really react to any wrecks that are just in front of them. And the two minutes is up. This will mean that the field will get moving behind our iRacing pace car. The Ford Mustang will take them on the one circuit around this Daytona International Speedway. Noah, for you, first of all, what would be your top tip to these drivers in being able to be there after 500 miles of racing? Well, that's it right there. Patiently working your way through this field. We have 200 laps, 500 miles. That's not going to be over in five laps here. These guys have got to patiently be aggressive. That I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but being aggressive to the extent of finding ways to get to the front, but not something that's going to cost you your race. These guys only have one quick repair. That's all they're working with here. They need to make sure that they're around after 500 miles. That starts with being a little bit patient. And Gary, what would be your tips to these drivers to make sure that they are, of course, here when the jacket flag flies? Of course, don't go double file instantly right away. Try to get single file as quickly as possible. It may seem pretty boring, and, well, that's pretty much the only uh, strategy that you can use because if you're trying to catch up to somebody and next thing you know everyone else is going double file right beside you, well, that's not going to work out. If you're swapping the two packs, you just have to stay at least... Uh, you have to stay single file, and that's the only thing that you have to do. Don't make any aggressive moves early on because, well, again, 200 laps and 500 miles here. As the drivers head themselves into turn number three, the field will be under the control of Liam Brotherton. He will be the driver bringing us round to the green flag as soon as that pace car jumps off. Everyone now getting themselves into double file, heading themselves through the 31 degrees of banking. Looking at a 93 degree Fahrenheit track temperature, 75.8 Fahrenheit air temperature with a... We're looking at a northeasterly 7 mile an hour wind, but it's going to be Liam Brotherton as the pace car dives to the inside. And the green flag flies at Daytona. One lap down, 199 laps remaining in this event. Everyone looking as though they're starting to get down into that lower groove. Get behind the leader, the people stuck in that higher groove. They're going to have to work harder to keep their position. And Noah, 
that top side. It's very close sometimes as we see very close contact between the number 80 and the number 16 machine coming through turn number two. Keeping that top line, that's what you need to do. That can sometimes be the be all and end all in this race, but that can also mean that you can get caught up in incidents. Yeah, very easy to get caught up in incidents on that top side. Nowhere to go. Right now, it looks like everybody's kind of fanning out to try to get single file on the bottom. That means those in the top line, as that line starts to fade away, will really need to find a hole here or else they're going to go back quickly. They are as we complete lap number two, which is looking behind. We're starting to see a challenge from the lead. The side draft playing into the hands of Ethan Crooks on that top side and Lethal McC McC um, McMillan as well, currently sitting in second position. So the top side clearly working at the moment. Liam Brotherton hasn't really got much he can do, but Gary, one other thing that we need to mention, bump drafting is gonna be very important here today. You could get that few extra mile an hour that you might need, but you cannot push and push it. Yeah, you cannot do a uh, triple car tandem in a sense. You just have to lay off the back. If you have somebody in front of you, like, well, in this case, uh, looking at that third car line on the inside, that is the 80 of Tommy Gosset. Well, he can't really push the number 12 of, uh, the number, sorry, the 12 of Kurtz that's in front of him because, well, the 12 is essentially already on the back bumper of Brotherton there. So you can't really try a triple car tandem and you definitely shouldn't be bumping into corners because that's just going to end the race for pretty much anybody if it goes wrong. So it has to be at least on the straightaways, but uh, even in the trial level, I've seen it before, it doesn't work in the trial level either. So like you mentioned, you just cannot push the pusher and well, if you do, uh, you better be ready to make some avoidance. Riding on wall with the driver in eighth position, Ben Nelson in the 79, sitting on that lower group behind the number 18 machine by the looks of things. Or well, the 15 machine, sorry, James Colby, Corbelli behind the wheel of that Chevrolet Camaro. You can see just above it, Noah, everyone seems to be moving about a bit, a little bit of buffeting in the dirty air. And that's where you've got to be careful because that's where the instance will start. The draft is really working here today because the fastest lap of the race so far have just gone to Femi Ola down in 13th position. Yeah, and we're starting to see that top lane start to form up a little bit more as one car dives out of the pack. It looks like he's going to the back of that pack, seeing something he doesn't like too early. But one thing we're going to have to keep track of, too, is this side drafting. Side drafting is a big technique as the 16 clears for the lead that these drivers can do to gain some speed. But if you get too close and someone comes off that yellow line and you meet in the middle there, that can chain that big one. And it seems a little early right now for them to be aggressively side drafting. So that looks to me as though Liam Brotherton is back into the lead as they head themselves across the line. But there was a, a portion of that lap there where it looks as though Lachlan McMillan was up to the front of the field but everything seems to have settled down. Liam Brothers is doing a very good job up on the front, Gary. We're six or five laps into this race now, still very early on, but he's dominating this front, front of the field. And I think that just shows that the drivers with the pace, they can lead the pack, but it doesn't show what they're gonna be like when they might get in the middle of a pack, thanks to pit stops. Now when the pit stops cycle through, it's gonna be a little bit chaotic because some of these drivers are the ones that are very qualified. No, they're, uh, they're used to being up at the front of the field, not really mid-pack, so they're probably going to be trying to scramble through as quickly as possible and get back up to the front, or in their hope, uh, on the other driver's hope, they should just be at least waiting just a little bit. But we saw the 48 push the 42 of uh, shot down the back straightaway there, just one lap to go. So 42 got even, uh, nothing as of yet. The 16 got by just for a few moments, but Robertson still remains in the lead. Live timing and scoring is available, ladies and gentlemen. Help yourselves over to Racebot TV forward slash timing, where you can track your favorite drivers all the way through this event. 29 drivers took the green flag. 28 of them are currently running in this main pack. The 29th, the number 33 of Matt Simpson, choosing, I believe, to start from the pit lane as we head across the line. And we have a new leader, David Schutt, on the higher groove, showing that it's working so far. Cuts down to the low side. Just put Liam Brotherton behind. But by doing that, that's allowing the 48 to move forward. The 40 mate, 48 of Ryan Hunt, who started sec the seventh, currently running in second and now challenging for the lead Noah yeah challenging for the lead now is that 48 machine that top side getting a huge push by the 54 there of Nick Northrup he'll clear down and take the lead away to add to that discussion of pit stops that we were referring to earlier 
What's going to interest me is if we do pit under green, who pits for four tires or no tires, just fuel to right side tires? What do they do? What do they take to maintain a pack in order to come away with a possible leading situation? If someone comes down and takes four tires and the people around them take zero or two, then what is the call then? You know, where, where will they stand after they're coming out? Will they be alone? Will they have a new pack? Will they have enough draft to get back to the lead? So we'll have to look to that when we get closer to pit stop, Jack. And here comes the pinch point as everyone makes their way past the 33 we've seen of Matt Simpson. He's going to try and get the lucky dog on the first course. Oh. Being the car blapped out. We have a crash in the main pack. Looks as though we've lost a few drivers. Another car looking though he's going round off of turn four. Caution flag flies for the first time here at Daytona on lap number nine. I was looking at that happening. I knew something wasn't really going to uh, go well. And it looks like the 88 hits the 27. And on the outside, it just uh, broke loose a little bit of a chain reaction. So uh, that's just unfortunate. They almost had it, but uh, not for the most part, I wouldn't manage to hang on to it. But unfortunately, it's about four drivers that got caught up in that. It's just an unfortunate incident. Another replay on your screen. You can just see it looks as though the number 20 got loose heading through three and four. The 33 was caught up in that one as well. Everyone doing a very good job to avoid the crash very early on in this event. And Noah, this is where the drivers now need to start contemplating their strategies. Do they start talking to their spotters, their crew chiefs, asking what's going to be the best strategy? Do I pit, go full tank, new tires this early in the race, or do I stay out and try and get track position and hope for another caution later on in the race. Yeah, definitely. Didn't think we'd see it this early on just now, uh, just talking about that moments ago. But you're right. What will we do here? What is the call here to get off pit road? Lucky enough that if you do take four, you, do, you still have the chance of being with the pack on the restart. And this isn't under green flag condition where you could easily lose that. But we will see here what different drivers choose to do as they come down pit road very shortly. And we have seen drivers cut down onto pit road. Sixth, seventh, it looks as though everyone is deciding to pit. And this is now where it's going to get interesting. All the boards hanging out so the drivers know where to stop, Gary. I think this first stop is important because it means that you can get good track position. I believe that maybe one or two drivers might have stayed out. But no, I think everyone has brought themselves down onto pit lane in this first caution. And a few drivers have uh, announced a 79, Benjamin Nelson barely overshot his pit box, but he managed to back up just a few inches. And of course, doing that under green flag pit stop is a lot more costly than it is under caution. At least that's my opinion of it, because while well, everyone's running at full speed under green, that's compared to caution, where everyone is already with each other and it can easily make up your position. So Nelson, unfortunately, loses a few positions off of that. I believe the 48 also uh, just barely overshot his pit box. He was a little bit crooked entering it for sure, but other than that, he is uh, now second instead of first, so he did lose one position out of that. And it looks as though the driver who won the race off of pit road is going to be your pulse to Liam Brotherton himself back to the front of the field, Noah. So Liam's going to be back in front of the front of the pack, and obviously single fire restarts. Everyone's going to be line astern as they head themselves back to the green flag in the next few laps. That's going to be important because it means that there is not going to be a top groove until someone makes one. And it looks like that 48 car that went in as the leader, uh, not getting into his pit box just how he wanted to, that was the reason for losing that spot off of pit road. And that is an excellent spot, because I didn't see that. As uh, it looks as though we should go back to racing next time around. The lights are still on on the pace car. But for Liam Brotherton, it's now a case of composing himself, getting himself ready. Lights are off on the iRacing pace car. We will be back to green flag racing next time by. And Gary, pushing off of this green flag, just build your speed up, get your speed there, and make sure that nothing goes wrong. Yeah, especially uh, trying to get the uh, outside lane. You just have to remember that, well, while you do want to make the outside lane work, it's just not going to be worth it trying to do it so early on. And my eyes seem to be deceiving me. The lights are still on the pace car, so we are going to have one more lap under caution. Pardon me there. As we are only 12 laps into this race, actually. No, we're in, that's 
it's quite early for a caution. These drivers, they were just building up their groove, building up the the pace and the consistency, and all of a sudden, they've got to do it from scratch again. And I think that's going to be quite a big shock to some of these drivers. Obviously, everyone's very experienced coming into this. They know what they're going to be doing. But it's still a challenge, nonetheless. Yeah, no doubt. And I wasn't able to see if anyone had to repair their car with a quick repair on this. But you definitely would hate to lose that essential part of this race so early on. Like you said, only about to complete lap number 12 here on the board. Losing that pretty early, you would definitely change the strategy, I would say. It would go from, let's go hard because we have this as insurance, to, okay, now I need to think about things. Do I ride around in the back and, and hope to steer clear? Do I hope to get to the front and hope to stay away from a wreck? You know, do I try to find someone that will ride further behind? Uh, as we come up to about, oh, excuse me, on the back straightaway, coming to, or through the travel, sorry, coming to take one to go, hopefully, here. What is the strategy for some of those drivers wrapped up in that last uh, accident? Well, I can tell you that at least all three of the drivers caught up in that last incident did not take their fast repair. We do have four more callers to pit lane. They are going to be Chris DeShong, Bobby Ch um, Chini, Brett Bunkari, and James Colby, Matt Simpson as well, going back down onto pit lane. So something going on, maybe deciding that they do need that their fast repair after all, or they're taking drive through penalties, but it does look as though some are stopping. So I think some people who decided that just taking the damage repairs and hoping for the best, that's not played off there, Gary. And instead, they're going to take that fast repair early on. Yeah, it may come back to bite them, though, if they do decide to take that fast repair. Uh, that 24 is definitely one of them uh, that I'm seeing right now is not taking that fast repair. So it's, it's good to prepare for anything that could happen because, while well, there's always a chance at Daytona that there could be just a massive wreck. And... Well, if you used your fast repair already, well, you're pretty much done for good. It could also be maybe some fuel strategy or even just repairing a little more damage before getting back to the green flag there because that 24 definitely did not take their fast repair yet. So definitely some sort of strategy involved, whether that is taking, your, uh, taking some more fuel or just trying to get to the rear, something other than the fast repair for that 24 two by two they will go as they head themselves off of speedway number four pace car will dive itself down to the left hand side back onto pit road and leah brotherton will be back under the control of the field with ryan hunt running the high groove we know he's been successful up there pace car onto pit road and we are green again at daytona Everyone with a nice restart. Looks as though Liam Brotherton still holding on to the lead for now, but it's not by much less than one thousandth of a second as Ryan Hunt moving himself past on the high groove. So something about that high groove, Noah, is really working for a couple of these drivers, which is a bit surprising knowing that the lower groove is the shorter distance around this track. Yeah, with this type of racing, if you can find help on that higher groove like that 48 has with that 16, you can definitely go places. But as you're starting to see now, they're going to need more help than just the two of each. As we got one spinning in the back, crashing in the back. And cautions breed cautions. The yellow flag flies once again. The spinning is just about stopped for Cameron Ledford, didn't he? It down in 27th position. There was a lot of drivers involved in that one. They head themselves through the tri-oval. It just looked as though a little bit of contact in the mid-pack and around Ledford went in the 88. And it was the actual aftermath there, Gary. Which a lot more of the drivers got caught up, caught up in that one. Actually, there was a little bit of contact from the car behind. And that was probably what then caused a little bit of a checkup going into turn number one. Yeah, 34 was on his side and a few more drivers, unfortunately, had gotten involved. And uh, it's pretty much the avoidance of that. Everyone trying to break all at the same time as... Uh, when you're in a train, uh, when you're in a line like that, next thing you know, well, you're going to have to hope for the best and hope that you don't make any contact. But even just a little bit after that, 49 gets a little bit of a piece of that just after avoiding a majority of the wreck. 
Yeah, what's very interesting there about that one there is that the 90 car coming down into that 88, turning him around. Was that him trying to fill the gap and get in line from that high side? Was that him trying to side draft? It looks like it could have been him trying to fill in. Just got into the way of the 88, sent him around and caused whatever the checkup was behind him. Yeah, that's just an unfortunate incident, I think. And very well done to the drivers, not for more to get caught up. But it's that caution spree, cautions, Gary, which is going to be important throughout this race. 16 laps in, we're already on our second caution. We, it just shows that some of these drivers may be pushing too hard too early. Of course, yeah, I, uh, I don't doubt that. Uh, from personal experience in the 500 that I've done, everyone was really uh, pretty much calm for the most part. So you are, it does make sense actually that uh, some of these drivers will be pushing hard, but to push hard to the point where uh, you're misjudging your distance against other drivers, as Brotherton does a little bit fake out there. I thought it was actually going to have the pit road, but if you're pushing hard to the point where you're forgetting about your uh, spatial awareness, well, you really have to tone it, down, tone it down just a little bit because, well, like you mentioned, as we cross the line, we're now 17 laps into this race. So uh, this can easily be expected in the second half of the race. So I think we just have to really uh, try and ride it out for the time being, not really make any moves, just to focus on strategy for the time being. And this is an interesting strategy call, Noah. Everyone from 15th down has brought themselves down onto pit road. So everyone from P1 to P14, there was a few drivers from the back of the field who got themselves into track position. But a lot of people from the mid pack bring themselves down onto pit lane and just getting that extra fuel, getting the brand new tires. The tires are only a few laps old, but they've already gone through a heat cycle. They're about to go through another one with this caution. And a lot of drivers taking that decision. Maybe it's worth just a new set of tires and resetting, ready for a potential green flag run of 30, 40 laps. Yeah, and just as you said, it only takes one to pull the whole train of the rest of them behind uh, down through pit road. Obviously, most of those cars thinking that it was worth it to come down and take the fuel and the tires. Maybe some of them, as we've been saying, trying to stay at the back. So pitting is the easiest way to do that. Uh, right now, we've seen a couple of quick cautions. Definitely, you got to be thinking that some of these drivers are feeling that they don't want to be up there right now so early with all of these guys racing as hard as they are doing it. And I think Gary will probably agree with me. Some of these guys are maybe it's a bit early. It's only 17 laps into a, a, two, a 200 lap race. It's much more about survival than you think. It's obviously still flat out at 200 mile an hour. But there's a difference between 200 mile an hour driving safe and 200 mile an hour causing an accident and taking half the field out. Oh, of course, yeah, definitely. That's why uh, I mentioned it. I kind of, I can understand running the uh, top side at the very least because, of course, everyone wants to get to the front as the lights look to remain on for the time being. But uh, I can understand running, wanting to run the top side, see how that works. If you're using it as an experiment to see, okay, well, if we can do this later on in the race, let's see how it works now and use that later on. Well. If you're doing it pretty much uh, every lap and actually trying to actively race the inside lane, you know, it could work, more power to you, but is it really worth it so early on? And one thing to mention to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that as per the rules of the NASCAR Cup Series, we have split the Daytona 500 into three stages. The completion of stage one will be at lap 60. The completion of stage two will be at lap 120. And of course, the overall winner, the end of stage three at 200 laps. The overall winner for this race will receive a prize of 200 US dollars and a trophy with each of the stage winners winning $25 each. So it's not just pride on the line today, Noah. It's also a nice wad of cash. Oh, definitely. And that throws in another element there. Those stages pay out too. $25 is better than nothing. So some of these drivers are definitely thinking about maybe getting up front for that stage win and putting it all together for the end of the race. If you can win both stages and that final amount, uh, that'd be a hefty payday for you. And that's going to be a payday which someone could take away the maximum amount of $250. And a very nice looking trophy as well. We will have pictures back to you in just a moment's time, ladies and gentlemen. Although we still have another lap to run under caution. So it shouldn't be too long now. Gary, these drivers, I believe one more lap under yellow. Back to green flag racing. And I think everyone will now be wanting a slightly longer green flag period.
Oh, of course, yeah. Especially through, uh, especially with all this going on, everyone has hopefully gotten the cautions out of their system and is starting to think, okay, well, let is let us all decide to just calmly race and just see where it takes us. But with the uh, twenty-five dollars for the stages, well, that could throw in just a little bit of an element of aggressiveness. But what really would be the point? Through, uh, of course, it is only twenty-five dollars, and of course, well, bragging rights in a sense. But it's not the end of the race, though. It's still a long way to go. I mean, we're only a third of the way into this stage, Noah. So the drivers are still maybe thinking, well, there's still a little bit of way to go. A lot could happen in the next 40 laps, even to the end of this first stage. And then when you think about it, 180 laps to the end of the race, it's a long, long way to go. Definitely. And it's all about what you want to risk, what you're comfortable with risking. Are you willing to risk the 200 for the 25? If you feel that you're, you've got a car like that number 10 car of Liam Brotherton, who we've seen at the front pretty much since the drop of the green, starting first, riding in the first position right now. If you feel that comfortable with being up there, then go for it. If you feel comfortable being in the fifth spot, like we see Ryan Hunt, go for it. If not, then now's the time right before we get to the end of this stage to say, okay, I'm looking at big, big picture here. It's time for me to drop back and be a little less aggressive than these guys going for it right now. As the field rounds itself out of turn number four, the pace car dies left. The petals will go to the metal in just a moment's time. We are green again here at Daytona. Liam Brotherton bringing us round two. The green flag slowly building up the speeds, trying not to cause the accident that we saw last time around and heading into turn of one. Connor Anton Noah, he's sitting in the lead. Yeah, getting a great push by the 42 of David Shutt right now is Connor Anton in that number four car. He's battling side by side right now with the 10 car of Liam Brotherton. Let's see if that 42, he has the advantage right now with the 42 on his bumper. A bit of a gap right now to Liam. He's going to clear Liam for the lead. Is he going to take it or is he going to stay with that 42 and try to drag him? He takes it down to the bottom of the track. He does. He dives down into the lower groove, leaving the 42 on his own there, Gary. Vulnerable to what's behind, although the 9 could give him a help. The, bu the bump draft might play into David Shutt's hand, and something clearly has because he's taken over the race lead. Liam Brotherton, he's sitting down in fourth position, so in one lap, he's lost a lot of track position, and that could be important. However, still a long, long way to go. And it's a very long way to go, and it does give a little bit of time for that number 10 to get back up into the front of the field, but the time being, he's just uh, stuck on the inside lane. Now, look at that on the 42, the outside of David Shaw is trying to get at least just a little bit ahead. He got a little bit ahead of that four on the inside lane, but right now, oh man, the nine of Eric Sable, or uh, Sable, oh uh, yeah, Eric Sable, he dives down into the inside lane, and here comes multiple drivers to pit road. And this is an odd choice. Why is everyone diving down onto oh. pit lane? I'm not sure. As a big crunch point as everyone tries to get down to the pit speed. Obviously, no pit speed limiters in these cars, so everyone having to manually control the speed. This is an interesting strategy. What no I'm one... thinking. Oh God. Sorry. What I'm thinking right now is that these guys. Maybe they're closing pit road with two laps to go. We see that's a common rule for these stage races. That would mean that this would be one of their last opportunities to dive down pit road. Maybe looking big picture, not looking toward a stage win, but looking to get out first and not have to pit when this caution is coming out on lap 25. As we see the 03 car running the highest groove of the track, almost in that safer barrier, making sure that no one else is going to be able to get into the way as we get more pit visitors this time around. Heading through the trial, David Shutt is going to be leading this race. Some of the drivers who just brought themselves down on to the lane currently running down the backstretch between two and three, Gary. So they're not under any worry of being lapped at the moment. However, if the pace of this leading pack is just two, three mile an hour quicker over the course of a lap before long, they are going to be right on the tails and putting these people laps down. Yeah, it's not really going to uh, work out for them for the time being, but uh, when it does come to uh, it does cycle through and everything works out properly, well, they will hopefully be able to make it, but they're trying to get around, so uh, hitting a lot earlier on. But uh, even I can use that best strategy, but it won't, we'll, uh, we'll probably find out because these cars can last about uh, 40 laps on fuel, so that's uh, pretty much right now. 
about I believe, 35 or so, just oh, just over 35 laps until the stage ends. So we should be fine, and they should be fine, I should say, until lap 60. The only thing that I can think of is that the drivers are running a risk of running out of fuel in that two lap window before the end of the stage. So the pit lane will be closed and they cannot come in and take service without getting a penalty. That would be the only reason why I can see people coming down onto pit lane. I mean, we've got guys currently out on stints, which are 14 laps in. And Gary, if they, or Noah, if they keep going to the end of this stage, they will have to pit at some point. So maybe the people who have already pitted, using this as a strategy call to try and get a good track position at the end of the stage. If we go green from now, I would say that everyone in the top seven will have to pit before the end of the stage. Everyone from about eighth down, they're fine. Yeah, that's right. And my apologies there, folks, for thinking that it was left 25. 25 is the number of dollars that they will win if they do win this stage at lap 60. I think that was the uh, misinterpretation on my end. But yes, we will have to see these guys make a pit stop. Maybe they reach their window, and that's why those others pulled off the track while they did. As we see the leading pack getting themselves around the 25, putting him a lap down. The 25 is, of course, the driver of of Tyler Dushamuri. He's down one position away. He started, but he's been up at the front of the field, Gary. We saw him fighting in the mid-pack. He's now put the lap down, but that could obviously play into his hands if you get a caution. This lead pack is really catching the people who have put a lap down, riding on board with that number 25 machine. Now, he's slid himself into this lead pack quite nicely, so he's going to now build up the speed and maybe try and save some fuel. And it's great to save with just uh, that little bit of fuel especially uh, early on in this race. Even though he's in between uh, just a couple of lap cars, he's probably going to let them fly and uh, just let them go by and tag on to the very end of this pack. But at the moment, he's pretty much, he's pretty much fine. And I don't think that uh, those last two drivers, uh, Cameron Lightburn and Garrison Hogan, I don't think they'd really want to try and make a move on the outside just to get around. So it's not really uh, a skill. Again, it's not worth it. It's way too early on to do anything too risky, like an outside move where he could easily fall back or... Uh, pretty much anything like that overall so it's better to just ride back and on the only time you should be going to the outside is either avoiding lap cars like right now or uh, cooling down your engine yeah everyone now running single file around the daytona international speedway as we see the number 12 getting very loose through turn number three did an absolutely brilliant job of holding on to that one ethan kurtz hands out to you as they go three wide through the trioval he's going to try and build up that momentum again noah but very close to another big accident, very well avoided by Ethan. Yeah, definitely, and we've saw, we've seen in this race already uh, a lap car playing into an accident. I didn't think it would be much of a difference when we're running single file and could easily go around them, but obviously that is something that it always needs to be looked for when there's a lap car and you're approaching with such great speed. I mean, these guys are going multiple miles per hour over what those cars running single are doing. So once they come up uh, to them, it all depends on where that lap car goes and where you need to be to avoid it. And that's exactly right. Looking at this pack now, you can see the number 12 slot in, slotted in behind the 25. The 25 is, is, of course, a lap down, but he's still running in this lead pack. He's just not going to put any pressure, and Ethan Kurtz deciding maybe it's best just to sit here. The car ahead of the 25 is the 88. The 88 Cameron Ledford was the car that we saw spinning on the second caution. So he's managed to recover himself quite well. It's a little bit of bump drafting going on in the pack. The 25 moving to the outside. Are we starting to see the formation of a higher groove once again here, Noah? Or are some drivers just trying to get round some others? Uh, it's very interesting. With this pack how it is as we're approaching another lap car here, uh, there's so little of cars, so you're really going to need to know who's coming with you. So as we see this nine car now making a move on the outside, looks like, yes, that, that line is forming with the nine and the car right behind it of the, I believe, 25 there. But you got to know who's coming because if those two aren't going to get to the front by themselves unless they can really get a monstrosaurus, monstrosaurus run and so i'm not sure what the plan is here with no one else helping him it just looks as though at the front of the field david Schutz staying 
put in the first position, running, cutting through the air for everyone behind. He's going to be using more fuel than everyone behind him, Gary. Could potentially mean that if we are getting a nice long green flag running stretch now, that he's got to go one lap shorter. And that can be the difference between a caution or no caution as we see the higher groove start to build up the momentum. 204 miles an hour for Cameron Ledford. He's the third car back at the top. But for the number nine, Eric Sable, he's running at 200 miles an hour. David Shudd at the front of the field is running at about 199, 200 miles an hour, I believe. So the top side may be showing just a little bit more pace. Yeah, top side is so, uh, indeed, especially since that 25. He doesn't really have much to lose in terms of, well, I believe he's actually one of the drivers that went to pit road early on, uh, just after that restart, so... He's got really nothing to lose, but you are correct in terms of uh, David Shutt using all the fuel because he, ha he has to be on a full throttle at this point because while well, he's leading the field, there's really nothing he can do. He doesn't really have a choice. He could go half throttle or three quarters, but that's going to stack up everybody on the inside as well as give the advantage to that nine on the top side. He's actually getting a lot of help from Ducharme there in the 25, so giving a lot of space just to make sure that... Uh, Nothing bad happens, being very respectful of space. That 25, occasionally backing off. 42 looks like he may let him in. Look at that. Already, just uh, with a little bit of help from 25. Eric Sable is not going to be the one using all of the all of his fuel. So the 42 can actually get a little bit of rest. So the number nine, Eric Sable, moves oh. himself up into the lead. The 25 cutting just in front of David Shutt. Shutt is going to actually lose just a little bit of momentum. Interesting to see that the 25 is getting involved in this lead battle here, Noah. Maybe working with that number nine machine, two teammates, two friends working together. And the number 25 of the driver, of Tyler, just showing that he's sacrificing his own race to help someone else. Yeah, definitely right now. Uh, you know, it, it really surprises me how they were able to get that pick of a run with only two cars, opposed to all the cars on the bottom, able to get that type of run to get up to the front of the field right there. You know, and, and even still, they're pulling away. They're gapping that 42. So these guys definitely are working together, definitely know what the plan is right now as they're going to stick together here. They waited for each other to get clear. They helped each other get to the front. So definitely working together as they head into turn number one. Now it's going to be interesting to see if the 25 continues to bump draft, because if he can, that could give Eric Sable just a few tenths of advantage, Gary, and that few tenths, that is very, very important here. When you think of the 200 miles an hour, it's, it's a further distance than you'd probably think. So for the number 25, his concentration is now on getting himself just that little bit further forward, getting away from the 42 of David Shutt, but Shutt at the moment looking very comfortable, sat in second position. Just sat in the draft, saving some fuel, trying to gain back what he's lost, running on full throttle, as you said. Yeah, now he's definitely going to be letting off just a little bit. If he was running on full throttle, he would be already out to the back bumper. And, well, right when I say that, there's still a bit of distance. So he's running full throttle possibly at times, not constantly, because he doesn't want to, well, A, use all the steel up and, well, of course, get right to the back bumper of 25. As he peeks out to the outside, this is, I was actually going to bring this up, is that I wonder if the 25 was going to get pushed by the 9, and well, when the stage caution comes out, that could actually help out the 25 here, but at what cost of the 9 of Sable, so this is actually pretty interesting. You know, Gary, I was just getting ready to bring that one up, too. Why, if they're working together so well, why aren't, why isn't the 25 leading that pack? He's a lap down, now just getting back on the lead lap with that pass, uh, to the point where now it's not a lucky dog situation. It is a, you're back on the lead lap situation right now, leading those leaders, uh, but back on the lead lap with that pass around the nine. That's surely got to anger the guys behind, knowing that the guy at the front of the field is now on the same lap as you as we see triple, almost triple bump drafting down the back stretch. The 79 is trying to push the 42, but the 42 was gaining on Eric Sable in the lead, and there was almost a put, don't push the pusher a situation there. The 79 looking to the high side as they head themselves off turn number four towards the tri-oval. However, hasn't got the momentum to get the move done, so everyone's still sat behind the 25. And I think that's going to stay that way for quite a number of laps. Everyone seems very happy at the moment, saving fuel, making sure that they haven't got anything to worry about there. 
Gary, and with the 42, I'm starting to see a little bit of an indication that he might be getting impatient. Yeah, just, just a bit, especially with the push from the 79 there down the back straightaway into the 42, and the 42 did not even let up. He decided to push the 9 as well, so that, that pretty much was triple uh, bump drafting at the time. So a uh, little bit sketchy there, but I uh, wouldn't be surprised if the 42 was shot and possibly the 79 of Nelson would uh, go around and help, the, help out that 42 get around and back into the lead. But again, the question is, would it be really worth it? Because shot at that point would also be using all of his fuel at full throttle. But the 9 is pushing the 25, almost as if to say they're trying to give each other a bit of a gap try and get further away from this lead pack however at the moment it's not working because everyone able to use the draft to their advantage riding on board with your pulse is Liam Brotherton in the number 10 currently in fourth position there Noah and he's just he was looking strong very quick at the front of this race I think he might now be saving himself either for the last moments of this stage or later on in this event yeah, and what's very interesting to me right now is how this pack is starting to break apart here uh, into two separate groups. So you know, one thing we're also going to see toward the end of this thing is who will work together, who will back up to get a run, collect enough cars to get around that 9, that 42, and that 79 there. That'll be the interesting topic as we head to lap 60. Now we're just about to complete lap 39. And... Completing lap 39 will mean that next time around we are 41 or 21 laps away from the end of this stage. We have got some more visitors to the pit lane. Everyone now bringing themselves out. So maybe part of that, maybe a few drivers realizing that they haven't got the fuel they need. Matt Simpson, we're currently looking at in the 33. Of course, the car that started from the pit lane going to be rejoining on the apron as we will see just behind the lead pack now going around the outside of him so he's actually going to filter himself back into the lead pack there gary or just behind he's actually in a really good position now to try and keep up with these guys or even try and get a lap back he's in a great position but i'm pretty sure some of these drivers wouldn't be too happy about uh, having him get a lap back but he does have a little bit of help if he can't catch up to the well, first eight cars in front. He does have a little bit of help just behind in the form of the uh, 90 of Randy Roberts and the 44 of Anthony Emery. And that may be changing of just a little bit because, well, everyone else is uh, starting to uh, join up right now. So a little bit of side-by-side -side action there. But for the time being, everyone in the uh, main pack is going single fall for the most part, aside from a few uh, drivers that have just exited the pits on the inside. As everyone now from the drivers, as you said, exiting the pits on the inside, it means the leaders have got to think about something else. However, they have now cleared all of them. Tyler Ducharme still leading that lead pack in the number 25, still the number nine of Eric Sable trying to push him just a little bit, maybe try and extend that gap. However, David Schutt still looking strong behind. Benjamin Nelson looking to the high side, but there's no one there to join him, Noah. So there's no one there to help him try and push him forward in this pack, which I think is what Ben is trying to do. But if there's no support, there's no point in even trying. Yeah, as we said before, that top lane, you really need some help if you're going to want to go somewhere. Uh, as I mentioned, the 9 and the 25, a bit of a surprise. They were two, car, or two cars working together, but being able to get up where they were as the caution comes out here on lap 42. I've had a caution. It was an accident in your leading group. It looked as though coming off of turn number two, replay will come up on your screens, ladies and gentlemen. Now looking at Cameron Ledford, second time he's been caught up in an instant. Backwards he goes hard into the barrier, and that is going to be day done for him, Gary, because he's already used his fast repair. Yeah, that's why I said earlier on is that you just really want to repair as much as possible, but right there, the impact on the back straightaway is uh, all pretty much said and done. And well, pictures are worth a thousand words, and well, that's definitely going to be a lot coming from Cameron Ledford after trying to get down to the inside just a little bit too quickly, and unfortunately got himself turned on the number 15 off of turn number two there. But throughout all of this, Tyler Ducharme is essentially on the lead lap now. And from that as well, the other driver involved in that incident was Garrison Hogan in seventh position now, the number 99 machine. He has stayed out, but damage to that car so he will probably bring himself down onto the lane and get himself a service 
And as you said, Tyler Ducharme, Noah, that strategy of running at the front of the field has paid off really well because Eric Sable, well, he's got the lead. Tyler Ducharme, he's at the back of the pack on the lead lap. Yeah, it really, it really changes things. He would have had that lead lap back either way with either the lucky dog or passing the nine. But in this case, he can now pit with these leaders. He will have to drive all the way around the track, catch up to behind the pace car, and he will now have the opportunity of pitting with these leaders as opposed to having to wait for them to pit and come around a second time by. And within all that, we've also had our first car disqualified as we see the leaders can't bring themselves down onto the lane. Riley Waynes was removed from this event. It looks as though he might have gone through too many pit stalls on his way into the pit box, something you do need to avoid. Some drivers staying out. The 49 of Robert Dudley will inherit the lead with Brad Bothwell in second, Nick Northrop in third. So some drivers who used the early stop to their advantage have now got track position, Noah. But it's the drivers behind who are going to be on the fresh tyres who are going to be really quick that we need to watch on this restart. Yeah, definitely. As we're getting ready to see, I believe, these cars pull down to the pit lane, we're going to see who the takers are. It's definitely going to be those in the front of the field, but will those that pit it early on stay out? And it looks like some are. Yeah, I think that's going to be interesting to see. I believe my timing screens might be a little bit out of sync with what you're seeing on your screen. So you can actually see some damaged cars in the field, Gary. So some people already deciding that the fast repair at the moment isn't worth taking. And it is indeed Robert Dudley who's going to inherit the race lead in the number 49 machine. And it's that fast repair strategy. And that's going to be something I think was going to be important come the latter part of this race, because you'll see a few drivers probably take it going into the last stint, the last 10 laps just to make sure they've got a perfectly working car however drivers who are now taking it early are removing that fail safe that they need for the next 156 laps yeah they're going to need that especially uh, this early on so uh, i don't know I, personally i think it would be just a little i think it would be worth going the laps down or at least the uh, cautions of breaking strategy just a little bit maybe just even repairing your car as much as possible and going a few laps down just to really repair that and not use uh that fast repair because if you do like you said it just removes the fail safe and next thing you know if you're involved in a bigger incident well your day is pretty much done and it's we've seen some in some reasonably large incidents so far noah but only involving a few drivers we're yet to see the big one the big incident where a lot of people get caught up. I guess that last green flag period, we we kind of removed the aspect of needing it because everyone was split up by those pit stops. However, everyone being punched back up, we've still got 28 cars running, 27 cars running in this event. So 27 cars all going into turn number one, two by two. It's going to get close at the front of this field. Oh yeah, and now we're gonna we're gonna bunch them back up. We're gonna put them back together, and now that's gonna play for another element. That pit stop with the few that ended up diving off pretty early there broke that field in half. Now we're gonna see them all right back together, and it's gonna be a bit of a dash. I mean, still a little bit of a way to lap 60 as we're coming around to complete 45, but it's gonna be a lot closer than we were when we took the last restart. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how these cars are gonna work with each other, or how patient they're gonna be with $25 on the line when lap 60 is crossed. And we will have to wait and see not long until that will happen. If you have just joined us, you are watching the Sim Racing Authorities Daytona 500 live on RaceBot TV. I am Jack Styles, and alongside me is Noah Lewis and Gary Weaver. Hugo Lewis is behind the cameras for you today. And so far, we have seen three cautions. This is our third caution of the race, not even to the one quarter distance yet. Robert Dudley, currently your race leader. You're looking at him on your screens. As the lights go off on the RS and pace car, we'll be back to green flag racing. And now this is the point where everyone needs to just tighten the belt, make sure they're ready and go for it. Yeah, especially uh, with the stage ending in just a few laps, actually. I believe uh, 14 laps when we get the green. So everyone is going to be just a little bit more aggressive. But again, 
not, I'm hoping personally that they're not too aggressive because while it's not really going to be worth it, especially while everyone is side by side, some drivers on new tires, some on old tires, especially, it's just going to be it's just going to be something to watch out for. So hopefully everyone can settle down as quickly as possible. But I wouldn't doubt to see that uh, we have a few more drivers on the top side racing for that stage win. Yeah, I think everything is now going to get a little bit more aggressive in these closing stages. With money on the line, people might start pulling off a few moves they wouldn't usually pull off. However, being there at the end of the race will mean that you are eligible to be in a chance of winning $200 plus a very nice shiny trophy and bragging rights to say that you have won a Daytona 500, something which not many people can say. As everyone heads themselves through three and four, the pace car will dive themselves down off to the left. The car, last leader of this race before we went to the caution, Eric Sable starting down in P number nine. Watch out for him moving himself through the field in the opening stages of this green flag period. Pace car onto pit road. Robert Dudley in control of the field. The green flag flies. We are back to racing at Daytona. And right now we have some new faces up toward the front of the field. Robert Dudley gridded today 18th and Brad gridded 17th. Let's see what they can do now that they've got control of this race. So a few drivers who might not be that experienced running up at the front of the field, now getting it being thrown into the deep end. In just three laps time, we hit the quarter distance, 125 miles into this event. But of course, still a long, long way to go. It's heading themselves into turn number three and four. A little bit of shuffling further behind. Ryan Hunt in for the eighth. Some dr a driver who we saw up at the front at the very start of this race, Gary. He's got himself back up into P number five. So I'd expect to see him as the first driver we see challenging for this lead. I would not doubt that whatsoever. Because he's got the 30 of uh, Brad Bothwell. He's pretty much just gotten left out to dry at this point because everybody, uh, I guess they... Uh, I guess they knew that everyone, everything was a little bit too wild in the first few laps, so uh, they're definitely trying to sell it out as quickly as possible. The uh, 25 of Tyler Ducharme is all the way up to 8th after being one lap down in front of the field, so he could also play into effect, uh, play into effect for this stage finish as well, but at 30, is ever so slightly like being shuffled back farther and farther among the field, but I don't doubt that 48 is starting to make a move by the end of this run. He's got the 16 directly behind him if he does need help. So the high groove not going to be used so far in this run. David Shuck going to get himself up to eighth position. So Eric Sable actually going backwards. David Shuck going forwards. But it's interesting that you mentioned Tyler Ducharme coming onto this court last caution. We, he was at the back of the field on the league lap. He's now running in seventh position, Noah. He's already got experience running up at the front with the quick guys, leading a lead pack. Is he now one of the contenders that we need to look for on the end of this race as, in fact, he's going to start a high groove? Oh, definitely. We saw just how fast he was uh, one run ago when he and the nine got together and worked their way up to the front of that pack. Like we said, that was a bit of a saver as we got moves for the lead here with the 54, the 4, and the 48 are going to take that 49. They're going to use that top lane to their advantage to work together to get around the 49 there. So Nick Northrop moving himself into the lead of this race, the number four behind, that's Connor Anton. So the two of them using that high groove, all of a sudden that lane has opened up and it's back to two by two racing at the front of this field. Watch out for the 48, he's being pushed by the 25 and behind him is a car or a driver who led a good portion of this, of the last green flag run, that's David Shutt in the 42. So all of a sudden the drivers who we saw come down onto pit lane and get those fresh tires, they're back into it, Gary. They're back into contention. We've got 10 laps left in this stage. Who is going to take the win? Uh, that's what we're going to have to find out. Like you mentioned, 10 laps at the line. So that 4, 54, and 48, the move, all three of them all synchronized, decided to make a move. 25, Ducharme dives down, and somehow, some way, we're meant to hang on to it. So I was about to say, all three cars uh, that were at the front of the pack, the lap or not, in the case of the 25, are all uh, running in the line. But now it's just drivers all over the place. Yeah, I saw that. The 16 in McMillan is a little bit low off turn number two. Everyone's yep. trying to sort themselves out, and it looks as though the 48 for a moment was hanging out to dry. And no, what were you going to say? I was going to say that we talked about the 49 just getting up to the front, a little bit of a new face up there. 
over the last lap, he's had a few few issues with hitting the apron through the trioval, and then even when the car cut down in front of him, uh, very evasive action by the 16 to pull low as we have three wide up here. And three wide, almost for the lead still. Nick Northrop going to be holding on to this one on that low lane, the high lane being led by Tyler Ducharme. He's got experience, and guess who's behind him? It's the number nine. Eric Sable has all of a sudden brought himself back from 10th position, sitting in fifth, running the higher lane with Tyler. So the two drivers who've got themselves to the front of the field last time, they're back at it again. And Gary, this is a very strong pairing we've got to work out for, but it's going to look out for, but it's going to be even more important now. They're both fighting for the same position. Oh my goodness. That was close by David Shaw after number three, but yeah, you are right. The uh, 20 Five and the nine can work together really well uh, when they're on the appropriate line. The 42 almost jumped up in front of both of them, but unfortunately they didn't have enough of a run. So they're going to be single file for the time being as Bichon tries to get back in front of the nine. There he goes. And 30 again stuck up on the top side. So he's not having the best of luck. Look at the move by the 10 and the 79 off turn number two. And the 25 is falling. Same with the nine. Everyone is scrambling to get up to the front here for the end of the stage. And no one looks as though they can decide what lane they want to sit in because the number nine has now dived down. Tyler Ducharme has fallen back. It's now the number 10. Liam Brotherton in third position, who's leading the higher lane, or it looks as though the lower lane might have just that little bit more momentum. Seven laps remain in the first stage, and we will find out who will be able to take that first $25 prize at the moment. It's still Nick Northrop in the lead of this one, but watch out for Liam Brotherton. We know he's quick because he set the pole time, leading the higher groove. I think that one's going to be important when it comes to it, Noah, because although, as I say that, he's not having help from behind. The 79 is not pushing, and that's what the 79 needs to do to get up to the front of this field. Yeah, he's got to get that run. He's got to have the 25 all over him. And what's so daring and scary about this situation is that when you're all over the back bumper of a car, especially on that bottom, you cannot see anything but the bumper. So going into oh. the turn is solely by what you're seeing in front of you. That's how it's so easy to get under that line and so easy to get on that apron through the trial because all you can see is the bumper of that car in front of you as we have two wide all over this front pack for the lead. Oh my goodness. Well, the four of Connor Anton dived up in front of David Shaw off turn number four there just for a few moments. And well, he's back to the inside. That was a really close moment there. But David Shaw finally back into the lead for the time being. Brotherton trying to attack as well, trying to help that 42 back to the front. But look at that. They just lost a whole bunch of momentum there. So Connor Anton may give a shot at this uh, uh, in the closing laps of the stage. I don't think Connor Anton's going to be quite fast enough from David Shutt to be able to get himself up into that high lane. Shutt and Brotherton worked really well for just a moment. David Shutt was in the lead of the race. However, heading into turn number three, the shorter line for Nick Northrop meant that he was able to get himself back. And now the 42, the 10 and the 79 have had to drop right to the back of the field. They've got it all do to get again they've got to do it again four laps at the line remaining in this first stage Liam Brotherton going to drop himself down into the lower groove so it's the number 79 so David Shutt is now left on his own up on the high line there Noah and that means that he is on his own no help and cannot get down low unless he drops back behind the 79 yeah, he's going to need to find a gap here. It was really unorganized. They had to organize that line. David Shutt was running the middle lane. We saw the 10 running the top. They had to keep that line organized for it to work. Obviously, they did not do that. Now David Shutt just looking to drop in and hope that he can find another way up to the front. So David Shutt has indeed dropped into the rear of this single line field. Just three more laps remaining at the line in this stage. Nick Northrop still looking good up at the front, but Shutt... Has he got a run? We've seen one car go to the high side. That's the number four, Connor Anton. Obviously trying to challenge for the lead. However, it didn't work. This now means the nine of Eric Sable as everyone gets very squiggly out of speedway number four. And Eric Sable really gaining off of that one. The car who's lost the most is Connor Anton. He's now going to get a push. We've got a car around. Exit of the trioval. Back to caution we go. And contact for Connor Anton. Yeah, death, uh, contact indeed. The four actually had gotten uh, all the way back in turn three. The four had gotten shuffled out of line. I knew it was only a matter of time. I was hoping they would wait until after, but 
Now, unfortunately, it's not the case because well, out of the trioval, uh, just got slightly hooked and somehow, some way, the 79 just got shoved out of the way. Unfortunately, he had nothing to do with that. David Shop barely gets by, but unfortunately, Brotherton got into the back bumper. Yeah, and we're hearing right now that race control has declared that the stage, meaning that Nick Northrup will be the recipient of the $25 and the stage one win. So stage one goes to Nick Northrop as he was able to keep himself composed at the front of the field. He had some strong challenges for Eric Sable. He came back from 10th on the restart. He almost had it, but it wasn't to be. Now it's we've got to see who's going to come down to the pit lane. Surely everyone is going to get themselves fresh tires and a full tank of fuel ready for the second stage. That's a no-brainer, surely, Gary. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I definitely... Uh goodness no matter uh what strategy i'm on it's it's at this goodness lap 60 this acts like a, a little bit of a stage reset if i could properly speak for a few moments here but it acts as a good reset here for uh, this stage because once you cross the line uh under pit road you're pretty much hanging to lap 60 so either way this could act as a good reset for some drivers you could get to about lap 120 maybe on the fuel uh, at least with a full tank of gas at the very least, but either way, it's going to be, uh, everyone just has to come in at this point, so I don't see why not. And that does indeed look like what everyone is going to do. The pace car is probably going to be the only car staying out. There's a few drivers taking a very late decision to bring themselves down onto pit lane. All of my timing screen is turning orange, meaning that we are going to have a very busy pit road here at the Daytona International Speedway. The leaders are going to bring themselves into their boxes, as there are a few cars who looks as though they've stayed out to try and get the track position or try and get a lap back. That's very important. Who's going to win the race off pit road? Eric Sable is moving. Nick Northrop is still stationary. He looks as though he's maybe gone for four tyres instead of two. So Eric Sable is going to come out in the lead of this race from everyone who pitted. So the race off pit road goes to Eric Sable, Gary. Yeah, so I was watching him and uh, the 54 in the uh, same shot that I was seeing them from and the, I just instantly saw the right sides go up. So I was thinking, or the left sides go up on the number nine. So I'm thinking, well, that's actually pretty interesting. So uh, I believe he and the 10 and Brotherton are the only two drivers to actually take uh, two tires. Maybe a little bit of feel for Brotherton because it was only 8.1 seconds for Sable. Brotherton, uh, almost 10 seconds. The same with Tommy Gosset in the 80. And we will just step aside for a few moments here on RaceBot TV. We'll be back with continued coverage from the SRA Daytona 500.
the most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $100,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. The end of quarter number four, the start of stage number two. The race goes on at the Daytona International Speedway. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Race Spot TV and our coverage of the Sim Racing Authority's Daytona 500. If you're all looking to warm yourselves up ready for tomorrow night's Daytona 500, you are in exactly the right place. Jack Styles, Gary Weaver, and Noah Lewis bringing you all the action as the pace car dives itself left onto the pit lane. Eric Sable will lead us round to the green flag with Liam Brotherton leading the high lane. The green flag flies and the, the, the speed builds as we're back to green flag racing with 138 laps remaining in this race. And Noah, we've seen a very competitive first stage. I expect to see the second as we start getting closer to this final, the final run to the second flag. Yeah, definitely going to see. We've already seen the intensity up. I don't know how much more they can take uh, with these cars right now here, but they're going to have to continue to think a big picture as we see that the 9 of Eric Sable goes up to block the 10. Uh, trying to maintain that lead. Looks like he'll probably drop it. Yep, dropping it down in front of the 42. Now that the 42 has the run. But big picture still on the line here. Lap 200 is where the big money is, where the trophy is, where the bragging rights are. That is where they're trying to get to. They've got to keep that in mind here. And of course, your winner from stage number one, the number 54, Nick Northrop, is dropped down to position number five through that caution, taking a slightly longer pit stop. We've got another 60 lap caution, or oh, another 60 lap stage coming your way. So this stage will conclude on the lap 120, leaving an 80 lap stage three for that final run into the flag. The, the high lane seems to have disappeared now, Gary. Everyone back to running that lower lane. Yeah, pretty much everyone is, is uh, designed to not really use the top side. We've already seen how it worked out in the first stage with the. Uh, four cautions and oh, a little bit uh, sketchy there as the food drivers just slightly come up off the corner that's going to be something else to watch out for as well down the uh, as I had through the trial rules that when you move up you're hoping for the person behind you to at least well never mind I was about to say you're hoping for the person to uh, at least follow you or back off just a little bit if you're trying to cool your engine especially instead of getting yourself turned by mistake well Liam Brotherton and the 12 of Ethan Kurtz and well now the number nine of Eric Sable uh, have all decided to uh, make the top side work as much as possible. I was about to say both, and then the uh, Kurtz were about to challenge for the lead. Well, they can't really do that now, but that nine is doing a great job of controlling both lanes at the great opportunity. And that's really what you need to do to consolidate your position at the front of the field, and we've seen that from Eric Sable over the last couple of laps. He covers that low line very well, but when he needs to, when he sees the challenge from above, Liam Brotherton and the cars behind, he knows exactly when to block, leave David shut in the open air, and David's got nothing he can do other than sit at full throttle and hope that he can get just far enough alongside that the nine can't drop himself back down, and he gets the advantage into turn number three. And Noah, I think that might be what David's just waiting for. However, a little bit of pushing might be about to occur up at the front of this field, so we could see a little bit more competition. Eric Sable sticking low this time around and making sure that nothing happens as he moves to the high line, forcing oh. Liam Brotherton high almost three wide as they head themselves out of turn number four. They are three wide, three wide for the lead. It's going to be Eric Sable in the middle, but David Shutt going to lead it around to the end of the lap. And Liam Brotherton going to sit in second. I have a feeling Eric Sable has dug himself a grave sat in the middle of the track. definitely has for the most part and well that very top line is not going to help out too well so that 10 is going to fall back so that almost didn't end off for the nine and it well, pretty much did he shot back to fourth for the time being so he's going to hopefully try and not make that move again as he just gets in front of the 16 of mcmillan 
And I was just about to bring up, guys, that he was doing so wonderful, controlling those lanes, top to bottom, not making it to where he could get in the sucker hole, as they call it, of three wide. That's what I was getting ready to say. He's got to keep it to where he does not end up getting split by those two cars, and that's exactly what we saw happen. And for David Shutt, that was the opportunity that I think he was waiting for. Was able to take a really nice advantage off of that one. He's now got himself to the front of this lead pack. The first 14 cars in your field are currently running in this one. We've then got a group from 15th back to 23rd. Gap between the two groups, looking at about second and a half. Tyler Bashar moving himself up to second position. So the number 25 now, using a little bit of the draft. It looks as though actually number 80 has got out of that one there, Gary. So maybe just a little bit of a strategy call. Didn't want to be running up towards the front. He's going to drop back and save some fuel. Yeah, that 80 of uh, Tommy Gosa, he's definitely wanted to at least... You know, save fuel. He just, I'm pretty sure, he doesn't want anything to do with this. He wants to have a little bit of an open lane where it's not so far up to the front, which is pretty understandable. So he's going to hopefully uh, drop back just behind the uh, 48 of Ryan Hunt here. And he's just going to lay back, let everything happen and play out in front. Because, well, if you don't feel safe up there, I mean, by all means, he probably doesn't. He feels a little bit uncomfortable staying up there with all those cars making all those moves so it's a very smart strategy to really just lay back let everything play out and save a little bit of fuel at the same time looks as though matt simpson 33 has brought himself down onto pit lane so pit service for the 33 a little bit of smoke because they had themselves through the tri oval but everyone's still looking nice and steady up at the front of your field. Focus back onto your leader and in fact riding on board with him now. The number 42 looking backwards from the Illinois uh, driver of David Shutt towards the driver of Tyler Ducham. And Ducham has really done a sterling job here Noah. He's got himself back onto the lead lap and behind is his, is his friend from a couple of a couple of green flag runs ago that's eric sable so these two expect to see them working together we've seen it a couple of times already and i have a feeling it's going to carry on throughout this race yeah it looks as if tyler's kind of hinting toward the top showing that showing eric that he's ready to make the move you see him right there maybe cooling off the engine or possibly hinting toward the top like i said uh the same story oh as the caution comes out we have got another caution. Looks as though the second pack has had an incident. The number 90 looks stationary. That's Randy Roberts, and that's heavy damage to the 90. So replay up on your screen now. Heading themselves into the try over. What happened here? As he moved himself down, tagged the 14. That's a big hit, and that's going to take at least three cars out of this race, Gary. Yeah, and we can have the replay, and the 14 was just a little bit up, and I think the 90 tried to side draft but that was just in front of the 77 or 75 rather of uh robert burris who had just lucked out of that but unfortunately multiple drivers to 77 actually he uh, did get a piece of that as well unfortunately as well as uh maybe a few other drivers at least 37 had just made it through but uh, unfortunately we are back under caution after a little bit of misjudgment of space there and for Randy Roberts, I have a feeling when he brings that number 90 machine down onto pit lane to get that fast repair, because I can tell you now, he's going to need it. I have a feeling he might also need a sick bucket, Noah, because he did complete a lot of spins, of course, hitting in that safer barrier on the outside. The safer barrier brought is an, in as a safety innovation, one of many throughout the early 2000s that really just brought up the safety standards, absorbing a lot of the energy in these high-speed impacts. But for Randy Roberts, if he hasn't already used that fast repair, that is day over. Yeah, we look at these uh, safer barrier walls, and it's really been a testament to the safety of this sport. But still such a vicious hit for that 90 of Randy Roberts. And we'll see as he brings it down to pit road if he has an extra car waiting for him or if he's indeed out of this race. Because that damage he has on the car right now will in no way get him back on the racetrack unless he repairs it or has the quick repair. And the repairs, I feel, are going to be too long. He has got the quick repair. So the iRacing Fairies have done their magic. The number 90 machine has a brand new car ready for the remaining 129 laps in this race. But look at pit lane. It's all of a sudden got very busy because everyone, Gary, is choosing to take the service. 
Yeah, this is about 13 laps, uh, roughly about 13 laps, 10 laps or so. After the caution, I'm seeing the 9 not taking any tires. 54 of Northrop takes two tires uh, on the left side, possibly fuel as well. So first off pit road, it's actually going to be a 25 of Ducharme, shut second, third off for Sable. So it almost worked out for that number 9. And for Eric Sable, he is going to be starting in a good position because he's going to be second car back on the lower lane. And I think that's going to be important because we know the higher lane can be sometimes a little bit harder to get the groove. For Tyler Duchamp, we know he's quick at the front of the front of these fields, Gary. But can he prove it? He's got going to have a lot of cars behind, maybe get some help. But his friend that usually helps him, which is Eric Sable, he's on the lower groove. So you've got two people who usually work together. All of a sudden, they've now been split apart. And if, and in some respects, Tyler Duchamp is now on his own. Yeah, in his own right, Tyler Ducharme is kind of on his own. He will have Sable uh, starting directly behind him on the inside, though. So hopefully he can uh, work that out as quickly as possible. But David Shutt, however, he's, you know, he's pretty much been uh, the thorn in both of their sides because he's been around these drivers pretty much all the time. So Benjamin Nelson is over in fourth, Brotherton in fifth. So Tyler Ducharme, I believe, is actually driving with the most positions gained as well. So uh, he is actually 24 positions gained after starting in at 25th. So he's uh, he does have a little, uh, he does have help from the nine of Sable, but for how long is the question? Because of course this is the 500, so it's going to be uh, going to be quite interesting to see how this plays out in the restart. And of course, we haven't even reached the halfway distance yet in this race. We are now on to lap number 74 of 200. And I think, Noah, that really does show that some of these drivers are maybe pushing that a little bit too hard, a little bit too early, causing these incidents that are taking just a few people out. And is that a case of, well, it's just silly mistakes, or is it a case of, yeah, people are pushing too early, they're still over half the distance to go we are creeping towards the 200 mile mark though we might even be past it by now but it's still i think a little bit too early to go 100 percent yeah definitely and we've seen these drivers uh some it's such an easy track to make a mistake at because there's there's no room for error and when you do have an error it typically takes a lot of cars but we have also seen a lot of over aggression early on in this race we're not even close to 125 yet which is the next stage and so there's no real reason for these guys to be racing as hard as they are i have no problem with tough racing but when you're pushing it to an extent where you're putting others in risk of not finishing this event then you really need to get the priority straight. The priority is the end of this race. That's what we need to make it to. And Gary, obviously the stage finishes on lap 120. We've still got 46 laps to run till we hit that point. These drivers now, what would be their strategy knowing that actually they might not even make it to the stage on this tank of fuel? Yeah, so they're gonna have to either, uh, they're just gonna have to Pit as much as possible, not as much as possible, but find the right time to pit, uh, preferably for me. And uh, if I was racing this, I'd probably pit between probably just a halfway point, essentially. Is uh, like you mentioned, 46 laps. I believe it's actually going to be 45 here on this restart. So split that in half, which is well, maybe just uh, 15 laps to run, and then head to pit road. Next thing you know, you're good enough for the end of the stage, but. The question is, when is everyone else going to pit? Because that is definitely going to be nagging at you. As everyone starts to line up two by two, and I think that is something that these drivers are going to start being worried about. What's the strategy going to do? People who pit early, you get a caution. They're in a good position for track position. That really helped the, I'm the driver of Nick Northrop in the number 54 on the last stage um, no, I'll be, to be able to take away that stage win. However, because of these cautions, because of everything that's happened, he's now dropped back down to 19th in this field. Yeah, and as we look toward the front of this field, uh, I'm definitely going to be looking at the 9 car and the 25 there. They're close once again. Can they get hooked back together and maybe race to the front of this field? It's going to be something that we will find out in just a few moments' time as the iRacing pace car will once again dive itself down on to pit lane 125 laps remaining 
here in the SRA Daytona. 575 laps have been completed. We are currently running through stage two and just 45 laps remaining until we finish this very stage. The driver bringing us around to the restart will be David Shutt running the lower line. The pace car dives to the inside and we are racing once again at Daytona. Tyler, du Tyler Ducharme getting an absolutely storming start off the front. Already been able to drop himself down into the lower line. And that means that David Shutt, he's now got a drafting partner almost instantly there, Gary. Yeah, instantly a drafting partner, but uh, at what cost? Because they are separated by that 42, but there is a top side that they could always work around and work with. So it's just going to be something that's going to have to play out over time for the rest of the stage. And Noah, you said about the 25 and the 9 reconnecting with each other and working together. Well, with Eric Sable and the 9 is now boxed in. You can see the three cars above him on that higher line. And it looks as though at the moment his best bet is just to sit on this lower line and follow the two cars ahead of him. Yeah, and this whole race I've been preaching patience. Patience is, is what you need to finish a 500-mile event like this. So what he needs to do is just to ride right now. If an opportunity presents itself and he knows that he won't be in immediate danger by taking it, then maybe try to get around back to that 25. But right now, third place is not a bad place to be in with only one car separating from that guy he's been working with all night long. And this is an interesting move by Tyler Ducharme. He's moved the top five, top six cars up into the higher line. Everyone's now going to duck down, and we're going to see the 75 and the 99 stay high. However, the 79 is going to duck back down, so is the 99. So deciding against running a higher lane for now and running back into single file. We can see it just a little bit further behind at the really far, far stretches of your screen, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of two, three wide action further back in the mid pack. However, that has now settled down. So these are the drivers still running up at the front, running single file, Gary. And I think just now counting down the laps to the end of this stage. Yeah, and that's the point. As the 42 is all over the back bumper, the 25. I thought it was going to turn him there off of turn number two unintentionally. My goodness, that was, uh, that was a little bit too close for comfort. You know, as a uh, commentary here, but, you know, David Shudd, he, he pretty much just wants to get going. He wants to get back to the front. I would not be surprised, so... He uh, either wants to get going or he wants to keep that 9 away from that 25 as much as possible as they move up to the top side. Shut protects that line. 25 follows in front. It's just going to be uh, it's gonna be quite interesting to see how far these guys can go to really keep these two drivers separated. It does look as though the 25 and the 42 were doing a bit of bump drafting through the tri-oval. I did see Eric Sable and the 9 get very loose. I think... That sort of came up on your screens as well, Noah. It just shows how hard these guys are pushing. The 79 moving right down low. The top three running right up high. And now they've opened up a high line. And here comes Ben Nelson on the low line. But the gap's too big. I have a feeling, actually, the top three might have just created themselves a little bit of a safety buffer, at least for a lap here, Noah. Yeah, but there's some sort of concern with running like that. Any, any car, and this is something that I'm thinking as well. Maybe Tyler Ducharme, oh, as the 42 dives underneath him, he's going to go backwards. That's what I was getting ready to say. Uh, riding that middle groove presents the opportunity for someone to dive underneath you. And we saw the nine of Eric Sable go right along with the 42 of, Tyler, or of, uh, of David Shutt as Tyler Ducharme now falls back and finally gets in line. Sure. Sham has dropped back to fifth mission. He's dropped back into that lower groove. So that leaves David Shutt, Eric, Eric Sable, and Ben Nelson up at the top three in your field. But watch out for Garrison Hogan. Liam Brotherton is still here, the pole sitter. After 80 laps of racing, he's still there, still in the top 10. I haven't really seen him outside of the top 10, Gary, apart from during the caution periods and afterwards making themselves back up. So Brotherton, I think, one of the drivers who we need to watch out for at the end of this race, just having a quiet day during the middle portion of this one. Yeah, he's having a wonderfully quiet day, uh, like you mentioned. It's, he's going fine for the most part. I mean, he's hanging on to the position that he's in very well for the time being. He hasn't really made any moves. Uh, anything major as of yet. Like you mentioned, he is a pole sitter, but he's just been riding in the back. He hasn't really made any major moves like some of these uh, other drivers that are up here at the moment. So he is taking his time very well, and, and it could play out into his uh, favor a little bit later on. As we ride on board with the 79 in third position, 
you can see just how close and how much these cars move. You're doing 200 miles an hour lower. The, the air resistance, the airflow, it's going to move the cars quite a lot. The 79 looking as he head themselves into speedway number one to see if there's an opportunity to just maybe start a high line. There's a couple of cars behind looking competitive but could help out on this one as we see bump drafting between the 9 and the 42. So the 79 has now got to be very careful not to also start bump drafting. The 9 gets very squirrely. The 42 does the same and the 79 heads for a high line. Yeah, we see those guys jumping out to the high line now, trying to make something work, and the 10 is going to be able to pull out a line and come along with them. Interested to see as we got we have drivers coming to pit road here. Yeah, so the pit lane is all of a sudden becoming very busy. This could be the drivers maybe trying to get the track position, Gary, that I was talking about. If the caution now does come out, they are in a very good position once the end of this stage comes and there are some very good drivers in this in this pack of people now bringing themselves down onto pit road yeah i'm seeing mcmillan uh hunt anton northrop bothwell and uh a lot as they're six drivers on pit road so that's a very good number to have six drivers even and well of course it's a great number to have as anton and so finally out of pit road so uh they are within 40 laps. As more drivers head to pit road, it's going to be the lead pack. Four, five drivers head down the pit road. So we've got David Shutt, we've got Eric Sable bringing themselves down onto the lane. There's sort of some big drivers now. Ben Nelson is going to take over. And I think this is the reaction to everyone else now pitting Noah because they've realized they're now in a position. I want to be in that position, and it's going to be more important. I feel like this is going to be fuel-only stops for all of these cars. Haven't seen any of the jacks go up, and it's going to be David Shutt who wins the race off pit road. And now the interesting thing to see is if the 79 pulls this pack down. We have the 12 on the outside of the 99 right now, so it's going to be a little tough. They're going to be side-by-side side if they do decide to come down pit road, and they're going to bypass it. So everyone in this lead pack clearly going for the long game, Gary, and I think that one's going to be interesting to watch because if we now get a caution, they get a free pit stop that they're going to be cycled down. And if we get a caution, everyone who's just come down into the pits, well, they've now got a free pass back to the front of this field. So I think maybe the drivers who are still out there running a dangerous game, especially if they're looking for the win in stage two, I think maybe some drivers thinking, actually, I'm thinking about that 200 lap mark. I'm thinking about that end mark. Yeah, they don't really want to try and make any uh, aggressive moves for the stage win since they're just now coming about 13 laps on their stint. So uh, we could. Nope, here they come this time, by. So it's almost everybody. Now it will be everybody. The 75 is going to be really squirrely hanging to pit road. Oh, that was a little bit over the speed limit. That was an interesting pit entry there by that 75, 99. Garrison Hogan locked up his tire, so the entire top eight now are all in pit road. I was about to say, uh, if they were going to stay out for a little bit longer, that's uh, quite interesting. As the 12 overshoots his pit box. I have a feeling one driver stayed out on the racing circuit. That was Robert Dudley. So Dudley's going to uh, take over the race lead. However, I expect to see him now down onto the pit lane because he's lost so much momentum. He's dropped below 190 mile an hour, look, Noah. And that just shows that when you lose the draft, all of a sudden you lose a lot of your speed. Yeah, and I can't see this being a, a strategy of Roberts. I, I don't understand why he'd want to be all alone because now he's going to pit alone and he's going to come out alone. And that's going to allow that lead pack to catch him pretty quickly. And he's going to go a lap down unless he can attach himself to the front of it, which I don't see happening. Well, that is the case. He's just been passed for the lead because the leader of Randy Roberts has just made his way through onto the trial. We're now heading themselves into turn number one. These are actually some of the drivers who we were seeing right at the back of your field on the restart here, Gary, who were running three wide. Now, they're running up at the front of the field and they've got that pressure of knowing, ooh, I'm now position number one. What is everyone else? What's the game that everyone else is now playing? Yeah, it's, the, yeah, it's something that you don't really want to have uh, playing to effect with your strategy. Of course, it could mess you up just a little bit. You could, uh, thinking about that, you could mess up any pit road. They still have yet to enter this time around so they're some of them are just coming at least uh randy roberts he's coming to his 16th lap 
Uh, 13th lap for Brent Pucar, uh, Brett Pucari. Austin Roberts, 15 laps. 14 laps for Bobby Shenny. 15 laps for uh, Cameron Bedford. And the 03 of uh, Nicholas Caruso, 13 laps. So all these drivers are on essentially a little bit different strategies uh, in terms of just a few laps. But they're all going to have to come together, erase that strategy, and just go back out. Or they could stay out and hope for a caution. And I have a feeling that's the what they're going to try and the game they're going to try and play is wait for that caution. And but so far, everyone seems to have settled down now, Noah. So the caution maybe isn't going to come, which these guys are hoping for. And that's very important for their strategy. Obviously, 32 laps still remaining in this stage. Still a long way to run. They can't get to the end of this stage. And the caution so far doesn't look like it's going to happen because everyone, they've, they've found their groove again. Well, how about this 90 car here? We just saw Ra uh, Randy involved in a huge horrific accident and now with that fresh race car he is out front and looking you know as you said for that caution for the strategy to work out uh but just just the the second chance that he got with this fresh race car after being involved in such a horrific wreck is amazing to me to see him now leading laps here at daytona and I think that really does show how much the course has played into this. Randy Roberts was just an, an unlucky passenger with the incident that he was involved in. However, that brand new 90 machine really proving to be working well up at the front of your field. He's leading by just over a tenth from Be Brett Pucari. Pucari Pucar behind him, 37. Gary not looking like he wants to challenge. However, he does have front end damage. And that could be one reason of why he doesn't want to challenge for the lead, as well as, well, there really isn't no a point to challenge for the lead, especially if the caution is going to be eventually coming out, uh, at least for the stage, anything else, well, then they'd be having a little bit of a break, but Pincari doesn't really have enough arrow on the front of his car, like you mentioned, the front end of his car is uh, decently bends out just a little bit. It's enough to stay with the field, but not enough to challenge for the lead, let alone stay in front for a long time without holding everyone up. And I think that one's important for Randy Roberts. He's still setting quick lap times. Last time Randy did a 45.8. However, the guys who are currently sitting from 7th down to 14th are running in the mid to low 44. So they're catching at about a second and a half a lap, Noah. The gap between the two packs is currently only about 12 seconds. So these two packs are actually going to merge into one in the next 10 lap time. Yeah, and that's the best thing for them to do right now is to get into one single pack. That's going to give them the most amount of time as they can to keep from, uh, I'm not sure how far back the next pack is, but to keep from being overcome by that pack. So getting together, getting organized would be their best option right now. And looking to this pack actually running from around seventh position down, there's a lot of shuffling currently going on. Everyone trying to use that high lane. What opened up contact between the 42 and the nines to head themselves through the tri-oval. However, everyone stays nice and sensible. The 42 has just been left hang out to dry there, Gary. So an unlucky move from him. These guys need to work now together to try and catch up with these lead group because if there is not another caution for the end of this stage, they are currently on the back foot. Yeah, they're really going to be caught on the bad end of this if they don't try and work together. Now they're all single file, so hopefully they do have enough time to somehow manage to make their way back up to these first six drivers. I mean, we do have what looks to be seven drivers in just this one pack versus the front six that we have. So everything that should be fine for them so long as they stay single file and work together. And the lap times last time around, every single one of them ran a 44-1, and every single one of them in the pack ahead ran a 45-6. That's another second and a half on that lap alone, Noah, bringing the gap down to around nine seconds. Very quickly closing, because these guys now in the second pack, looking forward along this back stretch, they can see the leaders. Yeah, they definitely can. And we we got to see these guys stay organized. I know they want to go. I know we're coming down to this. And I can see the 9 and the 25. Guys, we've talked about all night trying to work that outside line, possibly flirting with it at least. But to catch this pack, they really need to stay organized. And that will put them at a great advantage opposed to those other drivers. And that's not what those other drivers will want to see in that first pack. Nearly two seconds gained 
on that last lap as we head on to lap number 94 of 200. The top six have just split into two packs. We're now looking at a pack between first and third and fourth and second. Austin Roberts currently at the head of this one as we are looking forward to the leaders. This is Randy Roberts, Brett Kunkari and Cameron Ledford. Two drivers in this pack have been caught up in very large incidents, Gary, and they're now running at the head of your field. So they've all of a sudden got a little bit of a second coming in this race. However, they've still got 25 laps to survive. You never know. We might have one of these guys take the honors for stage number two. I mean, yeah, that is. I don't doubt that whatsoever. You mentioned that uh, about 25 laps to go in this stint. But just some of these drivers are... Uh, just on either lap 20 on their stint, so it's going to be deadly close. I don't think they'll be able to make it, actually, considering that we can get about eh, just a maximum of about 40 to 43 laps of fuel. So if they can somehow stretch it to 50, that would be absolutely impressive, but they'd have to pit at some point, and, well, that's probably going to relinquish the lead back over to the 11, who's now leading that second pack of Femi Ola, and as well, everyone's a little bit side-by-side -side now, and that pack just... Uh, starts to move to the outside so uh i'd rather have them focus on staying single file first since they're just about to come up on these uh fourth through a uh, place drivers i feel like i might rename this pack which is currently trying to catch the leaders now or like a swarm of wasps that's what it seems like they're catching so fast they're just going to go straight past i mean you look at the three drivers who have dropped off from the top six pack by the end of this lap I think some of them are going to be behind. These guys have now got to think they've got two lanes open. We're going to be adding three more cars to this, and you've got to get past. You're running at 10, 15 mile an hour higher speeds. Where do you go to get the move done? Yeah, here they come to this next little group of cars, and it looks like the best thing for this, this group to do is we actually see the 24 with a lot of damage. Actually, the, the 27 with a bit as well. They need to latch on to this pack. They need to find a way, hopefully, to stay with this pack. And when they catch the next one, they can go ahead and pass them. Um, but right now, the strategy, if any, that they were thinking of was probably torn apart by this lead pack passing them, or this second pack passing them. And it just looks as though everyone has managed to wear their, make their way past. The final driver, Ella Ducharme, has got his way past. However, he has lost the tail of the number 42 machine, as we do have some drivers bringing themselves down onto pit road. Randy Roberts, Beth Pankari, and Cameron Ledford. That is your top three who were leading and now pitting. So, Gary, you spotted that one. That now hands the lead back over to this leading pack, Femi Olat. If he leaves at the end of this lap, he'll be his first lap counted as a leader. And it's going to be absolutely impressive for him to uh, get the honors of saying, well, I love the Daytona 500, at least at some point, where uh, we get a little bit of bragging rights for that one. But now, about the uh, former back six, Austin Roberts, Bobby Cheney, and well, uh, Nicholas Corelso, uh, they're all heading to pit road as well the next time around. So, yeah, it was correct. There's no way they would be able to make it through the uh, 50 laps, uh, the remaining laps, I should say, of the stage. So now, Penny Ola has to focus on surviving and maybe getting a stage run. No, I'm just looking through the names in this pack that we're currently looking at. Obviously, the top four who we're seeing almost line astern down the back stretch. We've got some names in there that could be interesting. Nick Northrop was stage one winner. Ryan Hunt, who we saw at the start of this race, very, very competitive. Same with the 16 of Lachlan McMillan. But Eric Sable, David, David Shutt and Tyler Ducharme, they've been left behind just a little bit in that second pack behind. The 9 and the 42 trying to work together. The 25, however, is just that little bit further back. Yeah, and I was getting ready to mention that. They caught that second group, or that one little pack of cars, and it really kind of separated that pack where Sable and Shot were separated from Ducharme, and Ducharme was, was well off. And so right now, what they need to do is, again, it's all about the organization of getting back organized to each other. And right now, David Chut, or excuse me, uh, Tyler Ducharme using the advantage of picking up a car to try to get back 
to this group of cars that we've seen together all night long with Eric Sable and David Shutt and Tyler Ducharme. Right now split apart but trying to get back together as now Eric Sable and David Shutt latch on to that lead pack. And as the drivers cross the line this time, they have reached the half Way stage 250 miles completed here at the Daytona International Speedway and 250 miles remaining for these drivers to go. Gary, it's halfway. We're an hour and 40 minutes into this race. So a minimum, this race will be running to around three hours. I reckon about three hours, three hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, the race that I've done uh, this past Thursday it's just about that same amount of time, about three hours, uh, uh, yeah, just under three hours, actually, about two hours and 50 or so minutes. So the second one that I did, well, that was about three hours, three minutes. So this is definitely about endurance, but more oval endurance rather than uh, road course endurance. So it's uh, pretty interesting to try and run a full-length race. And I give props to all these guys that are at least out front or at least uh, still in this race, especially some of them trying to challenge for the lead eventually for the lap 120 stage. No, we were having this discussion before we went live today. Road endurance and oval endurance, two very different things. Oval endurance, I would probably say, is actually harder because it's such high speeds for a very long time. Yeah, when you're thinking of, an, of a road endurance race, you're thinking of, you know, cars here and there passing you that are faster than you or... But just more of a spread out situation. You're thinking oval endurance. This is very intense. These cars are bumper to bumper to bumper to bumper all the way through this field. And like I said, the visibility is low. The mentality of going around and around or on somebody's bumper, I mean, impatient. You can get very impatient riding behind somebody, even in, in this single file pack, you know? It just it gets to be grueling at some point where, you, where you're turning and and you're working so hard that you're really hoping for a caution at some time. Uh, and, and it just is something that's a whole different ballgame from road endurance. Obviously, both take a lot, but oval endurance definitely takes a lot of patience, a lot of aggressiveness when needed, uh, but definitely is something way different. And Gary, also, road endurance, we do see road, uh, the, on races on the roadside, which last as long as this one, three, three and a half hours, all the way up to 24 hours. Now, you have multiple drivers doing those races, so over a three-hour race, you might only do an hour and a half each. One driver might be two hours, another might be one. In this race, it's one driver all the way, and the only breaks they get are in the very short course periods that we might see, and for sometimes, as I've seen before in, in some races, they can go 190 laps without the caution period. I mean, that's absolutely Also, it's even more grueling because, well, uh, like what Noah brought up, the visibility is low. Well, in the case of anybody behind, well, anybody in this case, say uh, Ryan Hunt, Nick Northrop, pretty much anybody about second to sixth, you are directly on the back bumper sent by in front of you, so you can't see much in front of you, except from the person's bumper in front of you. And if you're lucky enough, just barely through their windshield. But looking at the uh, in car of David Shutt, well, he can't really see anything except the back bumper of Sable right now, unless you're in the corners. The corners get a small break, a little bit more visibility to see in front of you since it is banked. So it's just absolutely grueling to go through, especially since you're trying to ride full throttle. The mentality, of course, is a little bit challenging because, well, you're trying to stay with the person in front of you trying to work with them but at the same time you really want to get going you want to make something happen but over the course of a long race like this it is uh, definitely a testament to how long you can go and another thing that we didn't bring up originally with that is is the throttle control you're having to work the throttle so much when you're in a pack like this you quickly get a run to that bumper and you either need to let off or at sometimes even tap the brake a little bit and that can really cause a chain reaction behind you to where everyone has to check up and it's something that you have to keep track of each and every one of these cars it only takes one to mess the whole thing up and another thing that i'm actually shocked that we've got 106 laps into a, a daytona 500 and we haven't yet mentioned it the tape it's going to make a big difference just that a little bit more tape, it's going to mean your car's going to run a little bit hotter. We've seen the 9 and the 42 running just out of the draft on the previous laps, Gary. 
are they potentially trying to cool their engines? The temperatures are getting too high, and of course, that temp those temperatures get too high. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, which I can't quite remember what it is in Fahrenheit, but it's very easy, especially in a draft, to get those water temperatures. Yeah, it's going to be uh, definitely just it's absolutely grueling. And while that is uh, 212 in Fahrenheit, but the time where it really starts to get to your car on the inside, well, that's what those gauges are for. And at most points, uh, that'll start flashing red at about uh, probably about 230, 240. So that's when those gauges start to flash red. That's when you really know that something is starting to go wrong and you need to back off as quickly as possible, cool the engine down, get to the top side. And sometimes, well, look, well, maybe I'll move to the outside at some point. So it looks like that, like the nine is doing right now. He could also be simultaneously cooling his engine while taking a move to the outside. So sometimes you could do both. Sometimes you're just looking to the outside just to cool your engine, trying to get back inside as quickly as possible, hoping the driver behind you doesn't close the gap. Oh my goodness! As the 16 and nine almost made contact off turn before there. So it's a, uh, it's a lot to work with over here at the uh, Daytona National Speedway. Closing the gap, as you were just saying, Gary. I'm not sure there was a gap to even close for the between the 16 and the 9 there. And the 42, almost like you can't decide which lane to run. The 9 is very slowly making progress. Good to get past the 16 there, Noah. But I'm not sure whether David Chat is happy in the 42 with the progress that is being made. So he's going to duck himself back down onto the inside, leaving the driver of Elliott Sable on his own. However, I think David Shutt, he can't decide. He's trying to just leave it to the last minute as to whether he goes high or low. And sometimes when you see those drivers ducking back down, uh, knowing that they can come back up, it's for that run. They're trying to get that banked run. They get more of a push by turning down. And once they can get a run and pop back up, they can take that run to the outside. And hopefully, the hope is to push that nine car up further with the run that, they're, that David's able to get. So... We're trying to. We're seeing them try to make that outside lane work now. Actually, doing more than they have in the past uh, as of right now, getting further up through than where they have been. But still, it's it's going to be very tough. Four against two is is not ideal. And it must be working for Elliot Sable because last time around, or X Sable did a 44.184. It's the quickest time of anyone out on track. However, I have a feeling it's going to be a different situation this time around. It is indeed. Sable is going to go a tenth slower than everyone else who is around him, Gary. And that shows that that high line, it worked for two, three laps. But however, it just wasn't working constantly. Sable and Shut have to find another way to get to the front of this field. Yeah, and Sable is falling back a little bit more, so uh, Shut now makes a move to the outside, but is, again, is it still really worth it as we have uh, nine laps to go before this second stage ends? Is it really worth it? Well, now it is because it's the closing laps, but the question is how worth it is it as Shut was just on the core panel of the 16? Well, that time there's definitely absolutely no cap to close there because they made some contact for sure as a uh, the second pack is actually starting to uh, close in ever so slightly as well, but they're battling each other at the same time. And it looks as though we did get for a fraction of a second three wide. We've still got three wide in this second pack back currently up on your screen. You can see the majority of the drivers running the higher line. However, Tyler Bouchard running in the middle and we have the number 90, number 90 of the driver. I believe he might actually be laps down. He is. Randy Roberts is laps down and so is Cameron Ledford. So they're just going to let these guys get away. A little bit of a crunch point heading through three and four there, Noah. But these guys starting to get very close as if they want to try and maybe catch up to the guys up in the lead. Yeah, and Tyler Ducharme is ready to go somewhere. He is all over the back bumper of the 10, now just giving a little bit of a gap, having to let off. But Tyler, it's a crazy story there with, you know, him being in that front pack and then falling off. And this pack catching him, he's now in the midst of a race that he didn't think he was going to be in laps ago, uh, hoping to be up closer enough to where he can compete for the stage if we don't see a yellow. Now all I can think of for Tyler is hoping for that yellow to come, come out with him not being involved so that he can get closer to the front of that pack. And that will be something we'll have to wait to see 
what happens and in Brotherton as well involved in this pack you can see him just ahead of Tyler Ducharme in the number 10 machine the car at the head of this pack though that is Anthony Emery a driver we haven't yet mentioned Gary running a solid race up the front of this field and really setting it out everyone now though back into single file and right when you mentioned that, well, not for the time being, because while well, David Shot and the nine on Eric Sable, they're still trying to make some moves. That's not going to work, but I don't doubt the fact that the 48 or the 54, maybe even the 16, if you can uh, hopefully uh, get rid of the 42 and the nine constantly getting uh, side by side uh, between him somehow, some way, I wouldn't doubt the 48 and the 54 trying to make a move for the lead, but the 11. More than likely, if any Ola, he more than likely wants to get a stage win, especially after starting 23rd in this race. I back towards the front of this field. Currently, it's Femi Ola sitting in the prime position to take the stage win in stage number two. He's got just five more laps to hold on to this one, but the challenge from behind from Ryan Hunt, he's starting to look aggressive. So is Nick North. No, so is Nick Northrop. Can Northrop Noah actually take away $50 prizes in prizes before you even get to the 200 lap mark? From where he's sat now, it's still possible. Yeah, that's what I was get, uh, what I was getting at earlier. Someone that could take all of these prizes, that'd be a great payday, uh, $250. So if Nick Northrop could get up there, win this stage, be around at the end, and wind up winning this race, he will have claimed all of the prizes, the trophy, everything that is awarded tonight. And that would just be, I know he'd be ecstatic about that. Do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, live timing and scoring is available. Head yourselves over to Racebot TV forward slash timing, where you can go and track all of your favorite runners in this event. We have just four laps remaining in this stage. Oh, We've got a car off. That's the number 16. He's high into the wall. He's going to spin it onto the pit lane by the looks of things. I believe we are going to stay green for the time being. The 16, Latcham McMillan. What a save, Gary. Well, it was a save until he got into the outside wall. Unfortunately for him, though, uh, I guess commentary of course one-on-one -on -one there is the fact that, well, he no longer has to worry about drivers on the outside of him, but unfortunately, though, he does have a lot of damage to go along with that. So if he does have a faster pair, he can use that to his advantage, but he's pretty much dropped all the way back to what is now... Uh, as I double check that position, by the way, he's definitely dropped back a major amount of positions all the way down to 12th place after being within the top, well, the top six for the time being. So now we have a five car battle essentially for this stage win. And it was be, all gone now. Sorry, I'll be very interested to see if Lachlan McMillan has to serve a penalty uh, for sliding down through there. And just as I say that race control has said that he does not need to serve a penalty, it was because of incident. So it looks as though McMillan has managed to stay away from a penalty. We managed to keep this race going green because he slid his way onto pit lane. You could not aim your car any better. Two more laps, five miles before we end stage number two watch out for the driver of eric sable working his way through currently sat in p4 david shut has dropped off just that little bit more the pit lane is now closed until the end of this stage in the final two laps and it is going to be femi olat noah currently leading the way around this one looking very comfortable as well no one has been able to challenge him he was setting fastest laps in the lead of this race Yes, but when will we see someone pull out? We know that they've got, they're have they going to. There has, I mean, I cannot see a driver not making a move. So we'll see if the 48 can get a run, if that 54 will go with him, or if the 9 and the 54 can make the run, and who will end up crossing the line first as we take one more lap to go in this stage. So the white flag is out for stage number two. Femi Olat still looking very comfortable. However, Ryan Hunt looking. Watch out for Nick Northrop in third position. He's going to try and take 100% of the winnings so far in this race. Or will someone else be able to take the second $25 prize on offer? for stage number two. David Schott slowly working his way back up onto this field. I have a feeling it's too late for Eric Sable. I have a feeling it's too late for Northrop. It's gonna be between the 11 and the 48. 
for this second stage wins. They head themselves through three and four. Still single file. No one making a move. No one's going to be brave enough. The 48 looking. The 48 going up. The 54 going to follow. And it's going to be Femi Olat winning stage number two here at the SRA Daytona 500. Just not enough time there. Not Did not time that correctly. He got the run, but it was just too late when it came. Wasn't able to pull it to the line in time. He needed to find a way going into three to make that run on Femio Lap. But Femio Lap, like we said, comes away with that stage two win and the $25 prize. So we have our second stage caution of the race, which can only mean one more thing. 80 laps to the checkered bag. Gary, it's now all about that $200 prize. It's now all about that trophy. Yeah, especially uh, to the final checkers uh, coming at to the line for lap number 200. It's going to be quite interesting, especially since, well, we've had Northrop, now we have Olot. Who else will we have at the end of the 80 laps is what I'm wondering, because, well, Femi Olot came from essentially from 23rd so it's showing that of course you know usual daytona fashion anyone when given the chance and the right strategy anyone can essentially get up to the front and well win something because Femi Ola has just won the stage and it's going to be interesting to see what people do obviously everyone going to come down onto the pit lane to get service now noah but the race off of pit lane is going to be interesting because it's going to set up the starting grid for stage number three it's not going to be the full 80 laps for the run into the finish it's probably going to be more like 76 that we're going to see here today for these drivers for that final run into the checkered flag we had a nice long green flag run as well so these drivers really showing that even though they had a few issues towards the start of the race now everything's settling down everything is about getting into that groove yeah and it, i can only say that it's going to be very interesting. As we mentioned, we're coming down to it. This will be the last go at it. Uh, a number of laps, and, and if they end up having green flag pit stops during the duration of this time, I feel like it will take away the whole big one scenario in a, in a way. But, uh, but this will set us up for the final stint toward the checkered flag, and you definitely want to be out front for this one. We do have drivers deciding not to pit on this caution instead to carry on get track position because that also means they should be able to get a lap back now gary so that's going to be interesting to see the race off pit road has begun however and it is going to be femi olat who wins that one very close behind is actually did liam brotherton yeah. get out before emmy femi olat i think he might have done yeah it was just by about a car length essentially well, not even car length about two car lengths even uh, coming off of pit road, then there was Olat, then the 54, then the 48, and then the 9. So, uh, yeah, there goes Brotherton back around, slowly making his way up. We'll see uh, what says on track, at least. Uh, there goes the 10. Yep, so a 10 it did just barely beat Femi Ola off of pit road. So we are going to take you race spot TV side by side. We'll be back ready for the green flag for the final run into the check flag here at Daytona.
Hungary. 75 laps to bring us round to the checkered flag. Leading us to the green is going to be Liam Brotherton in the Sim Racing Authority's Daytona 500. Live from the Daytona International Speedway here on Racebook TV, streaming live on IA Racing Live. I am Jack Styles, and alongside me will be Noah Lewis and Gary Weaver, Hugo Luis on the cameras. A quick shout out to Istvan Balao, tracktimes22.com, Simon Gross for Vapor Engineering, Andreas Werner of Ander Designs, and our live's timing and scoring is provided by Nick Thyssen and is available at Racebot TV forward slash timing. Head yourselves over there and you can track your favorite drivers for the final portion of this race. We have just concluded stage number two where Femi Olat took away the $25 prize and heading into the final 75 laps. It's all to play for, $200, and a nice shiny trophy is on the line. The pace car is going to duck itself onto pit lane, but we are back to green flag racing at Daytona for stage number three. everyone very quickly ducking down onto the lower line the high line clearly not being favored at this stage in the race everyone's just a, everyone just wants to settle down Noah and make sure that they have a safe car towards the end of this race yeah definitely right when we get on this restart uh, the risk of the big one is is huge and so them getting down into line really eliminates most of that concern there could still be I mean we still have the pack We've kind of split into two now, but the second pack uh, can still have that happen, and people can pile in at any moment. But I can see that a lot of these drivers are thinking, "Hey, it's you know we're in the stage, we're in stage three, but there's still a bit of a way to go here, and we need to make sure we're around to have our hat in the in the race." And Gary, obviously, this final run to the flag, everyone needs to be very very content who is going to be your pick from what we've seen so far in the previous 126 laps of this race to take their car to victory lane today Liam Brotherton he's back up in the front position just off of a pit stop no less so uh, I'm going to go with number 10 for winning this he hasn't really been involved in anything he's just been quietly laying back in the middle of the field ever since uh, the main start of this race ever since he got shuffled back a little bit but he's found his way back up front at the uh, within this first few laps of the second half. So we'll find out. But I'm definitely picking that number 10 for the win. And Noah, what about you? Who's going to be your pick to bring themselves onto victory lane by the end of this race? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, anything can happen here. We've seen Nick up here for a, a great portion of this race. And then we can also look to the 9 car, the 42 car, the 25 car. Those guys have been working so well together. They could definitely pull off a move to get them to the front. So I couldn't just put, I, if I had to just pick one, I'd go with the 9 because he has been all over, ready to go, finding partners to work with, get into the front. So I think I'll go with the 9, but it is just very hard to choose. And your stage one winner, Nick Northrop, has managed to move himself up towards the front of this field. The number 10 of Liam Brotherton just going to slot in behind. There is a higher line forming once again, led by Emmy or Femi Olat in the number 11, but now led by Liam Brotherton putting on a challenge for the lead. He's got the overdraft, I think, on Nick Northrop as they head themselves into turn number three. Still hasn't got the advantage there, Gary, to be able to slip back down. And back comes Nick Northrop on the inside. Side by side as they head out of four for the lead. Yeah, the 11, or the, sorry, the 10 of, oh well, yeah, the 11 Femi Ola, he backed off a little bit. Didn't want to push for 10 right away. Didn't want to really put too much of a hard shot. If someone dives down to the inside. So it does Brotherton for the lead. That's all the four down to the inside. That's Connor Anton. So everyone making a lot of moves. David Shot made a few moves uh, just a couple of laps ago. He's now on the top side. So everyone is really starting to uh, make their moves. But they're going to have to remember spatial awareness is key. And uh, 70 laps to go, so is the fuel. And the fuel is going to be important because if these drivers now run green to the end, they will have to make one more green flag pit stop. Something which you said during the break while we stepped away for a few seconds, Noah, is that in your view, as soon as you add in those green flag pit stops, you take away quite a large possibility 
of that big crash. Yeah, definitely. The, the possibility of the big one, which we haven't seen. We have a number of cars out here. We still, we've still we seen minor incidents, but we have not seen the big one yet, which is notorious for super speedway tracks like Daytona. I'm interested as well to see when these guys do decide to pit. Do they come right when the window opens? In that case, it won't be long from now, uh, opposed to if they pushed it all the way to where their fuel tanks were close to empty. So just timing when they come down, who comes down with them, that can decide a lot. But right now, the big one is luring as they stay side by side. And still a few cars running the high line, currently still led by the number 11 up at the front, sitting in position number four. Ryan Hunt down below in the 48, just getting ahead. A little bit of buffeting as they head through one and two there, Gary. This is where they've got to be careful, because it's that movement that causes the accidents that we see that can take out so many drivers in this field. Everyone's got to be really careful. While, while everyone does want to get up to the front, they've got to remember again, with the strategy as well as the fact where well again you don't really want to take everybody else out you want to take yourself out at the very least just make sure you stay off the track while doing so sometimes people do try to correct it but most of the times nine times out of ten they manage to end up over correcting it next thing you know well they don't really uh well, they're not too pleased with the drivers that are involved within that wreck we still have again mentioned a few times actually seen very few wrecks, very small wrecks throughout this race, so we still have yet to see the big one, but I don't know, it's just got to be, that just got to be really careful for the most part. And it's the careful driving that's really going to mean that these drivers can be there at the end. 67 laps now to the end of this race, with two hours and ten minutes in, so these drivers are already going further than a double stint and a driver in something like the Neo Endurance Series would in a GT car as Nick Northrop now moves himself into second position. So Femi Olat still leading the high line here, Miller. The high line all of a sudden looking quick once again, but that could be because of such a large side draft from these cars. Yeah, and the number of cars is key. If you can get a number of cars into that top lane, along with that side draft of holding those guys to the bottom, it can really work to your benefit, but you need to have that formation, that organization. You need to make sure that everyone is close enough to push. As the 79 gives the 25 a great push, he's going to get up to the 99. That needs to transfer to the 11. That needs to continue. All of that momentum will help out that 11 to gain some more. As the 54 actually now drop, or jumps up to the high side and is racing for a battle for the lead. As we have car on the wall, everyone diving to get away. We stay green flag. We do stay green flag. Ooh. I thought we were about to see another course, and I thought oh, we were there about it is. to see Around the big ones. The 30 80. car involved. And still no yellow. Up. How? Yeah, still no yellow. We've got the, the replay of the 99 up. We're going to have a look forward to the 30 car rejoining that. I believe that was the 42. And that was a lot of cars involved. How we stay inches. green flag racing? I am not sure, but we have stayed green flag as we head to 65 laps remaining. That's taken, I reckon, half the field out of contention now, Gary, and it's going to need another caution to bring them back. Yeah, it's going to need a caution. I, even, I'm surprised on uh, why the caution wasn't thrown. Uh, pretty sure race control even thought that it was going to be thrown, but they decided, well, at this point, it's too late to throw it, but... Uh, I don't know, but either way, that does pretty much split off the entire field for the most part. The 42 is out of contention. We basically just have the top 10, sort of the top 11 in the form of the number 44, Anthony Emery. is just on the tail end, the 75, as well as uh, Brown tail end, same with the number 12. Everyone's just spread out, so the only cars that are really in a line, all bunched up together, is the entire top 10. As Brotherton has really shuffled out, he's dropping back into position number 5 now. And now Lachlan McMillan, Tommy Gossett, two of the guys involved in that one, just now about to come up at road for uh, Tommy Gossett. But Lachlan McMillan, I believe, has already taken his, his reset, and he's still sitting on pit road. Also involved the 15 car, who got rolling a little late all by himself. So numerous, numerous cars involved in that incident. Two separate incidents that both kept the racetrack under a green flag condition. I am extremely surprised by that, but I guess nothing to trigger the iRacing caution. 
And I think I'm more surprised at the fact that we actually didn't have half the field involved in that one. And that it was just localized to the few cars that were involved. There were a lot of cars slowed up by that, but not a lot of cars that were taken out by that crash. Up at the back, at the front of the lead of the field, Nick Northrop has taken over the leading position, but everyone in the top 13 now back into single fire rate, file racing now. Yeah, now down into single file racing, as you just said, and I think that has a lot to do with what just happened. Guys, really just realize quick, hey, you know, this is, this is getting a little intense, this is getting a little crazy. We're still far from the finish. We need to calm it down a little bit. We got lucky enough to get through that, whoever's still in the front pack. So let's calm it down just a little bit for the time being and ride single file. And it's going to be that single file racing that I think is going to define maybe the next 40, 50 laps. Those final 20 laps, though, Gary, that's going to be where people start getting aggressive. That could be where we could start seeing maybe a few cautions happening. We could maybe see a repeat of what we saw in the E-NASCAR peak anti-free tire racing series where we had, or and even some of the races that we've seen before, where we have a one-lap shootout to the finish. Yeah, if we have a one-lap shootout, it's pretty much all bets off, and no one has any friends at that point, aside from the uh, people who really don't mind uh, pushing you to the win, since sometimes you really have no choice if you have people on the outside of you trying to race for the win. But well, speaking of the outside, we're back to what we had before. Four, almost in a sense with the uh, all three cars on the top side and a seven car pack trying it to uh, make a move on the outside lane we had that in just up the last stage but now there's three other drivers Eric Sable, Connor Anton and uh, Chris Deschong those last three drivers in the top ten they're probably going to be playing into effect with this as well and numerous cars exiting pit road including Randy Roberts, David Shutt, Bobby Chaney uh, just coming off a of pit road, so looks like these guys have made a stop. And that also only leaves 14 cars, I believe, on the lead lap now. So everyone starting to make their final pit stop, maybe a little bit early. We need to be running to the end of this fuel tank, if anything, before even thinking about making that final fuel stop. Because as Gary has said, it's 40 laps. The tyres, however, wouldn't be that much more of an issue. The track temperature has dropped now 79 degrees Fahrenheit. So a little bit more grip now, Gary. Especially with the cloud cover that we have now throughout the race, uh, as the sun slowly starts to peek back out on the uh, top side of the 10, the 79, and once again the 88. Um, looking at Sable, he decides to go up. Same with Anton and the 27 of Deshaun. I'm interested, actually, you know, they head back down to the inside. So they're swapping between both lanes just to get a run. As mentioned earlier, sometimes the inside to the outside. Then the Ola has jumped out in front, so now it's going to be side by side. And he's going to try to somehow take that lead away from the 54th Nick Northrop. Under 60 laps remaining now in this event, and Femi Olak was the driver we saw really pushing that high line to start off with from the restart. He's back at it again, and it was working just for that little bit across the line. He was registered as the race leader. However, losing the momentum through one and two is going to drop him back down to four. Nick Northrop, Ryan Hunt, and Tyler Duchamp are really pushing out at the front of this field, Noah, getting themselves up into P3. And I have a feeling that whole high line is now going to be cycled to the back of this pack. Yeah, and here's a lap car actually to play a factor. Will they be able to get through? They do. We've seen a couple of lap cars here playing factors tonight into a couple of wrecks. But it's really interesting to me to see how intense and how ready to go these guys are right now, now that the top line is forming up to make more of a run. And we have had another one form from that back marker. Tyler Duchamp was the leader across the line. However, we're seeing the same story again. It's quicker through one and two on the low line. We've seen the 11 just duck down, riding on board with the 48 of Ryan Hunt here, Gary. And I think taking that high line is a gamble right now. It's a gamble that could pay off. However, if people work that out, they're going to be using that towards the end of the race. And you're all of a sudden on the back foot. Yeah, everyone's going to have to be really careful on knowing what line is the best and what line is really going to help out uh, the drivers for that win. As peeking up to the outside, oh, that was really sketchy there. The 9 Sable and the 4th Anton both peeked out to the outside. Sable and Anton both decide, well, you know, we're going to dive back down to the inside. Don't have enough momentum. So that almost, at least from the angle I was looking at, that was really close to the back bumper of the 54th Northrop as Bouchon and Hunt. 
have a farm back to a single file on the inside. Eric Sable has really advanced, had a good advantage off of that because he's been able to get himself up into second position. So for a driver that was running down in eighth position, Noah, down towards the back of this pack, all of a sudden he stood on the podium. He is within grasp of victory lane, but with 56 laps remaining, still further than quarter distance to go in this race. There is a lot still to play for. Yeah, and that's exactly why I chose him as my pick for the for the win because he is is coming through the field with every little thing he can get. He, if he finds a run, he'll take it. If he finds a partner, he'll he'll use it. He will find his way back to the front of this field. He has already right now in that second position. And look now, pulling up in front of the four. But now this is not going to work to his favor. He thought that four would take a run with him. They died back down. He's going to drop to the back. But I wouldn't say for long. If if any way that he'll have his way to it, he'll be back up front in a, in a few laps here. And if anything, I would actually say that was a bit more of a, a very cheeky move by the number four, following the number nine up onto a high lane and all of a sudden ducking back down. Because it means that Eric Sable lost all of his support there, Gary. So he's now got to cycle right to the back of his pack right now, back behind the driver of Ryan Hunt into eighth position. So he's back from ground zero, all the work to do again. He's done it once, but he's proven to himself that he's done it once. Now he's got to go and do it again. That's really unfortunate. He's probably, he's more than likely not too happy about that, but on the bright side for him, it wasn't within the final few laps as the um, majority of these, well, pretty much every single one of these drivers are about 20, almost 24 laps on their stint. So when they come across the line uh, this time around, they have 24 laps on their stint. As well as the fact where, again, they have about 15 laps, if I can probably do math correctly, I don't think I can, but they have about uh, 10, 15 laps actually left to run of this race. So if you can just stretch it out to under 40 laps to go, then they'll be able to make it for the time being, but it just depends on uh, who goes with you into that pit road. I reckon that they're going to have 15 laps remaining on this stint, 53 laps remaining at the line in this race, and so they've got to do another 13 laps minimum before they can even think about pitting. And Noah, one other thing is going to be, however long this race runs, at some point, these drivers are also going to have to deal with a big ball in the sky which fires hot particles and heat and electromagnetic radiation at the Earth. That's going to start setting, and it start, it's going to start going dark. So at some point, these drivers are going to have the sun shining into their eyes. Yeah, the, the actual track temp and, and how that affects the race car isn't very much here because you're not really doing much more than holding the throttle down. But as you mentioned, when that sun starts to set, it definitely will be a distraction. And with the already little visibility that you have behind another car and the already impatience that you get from riding, that sun is just going to bother some of these drivers even more. And we'll see which ones will prevail and can prevail through that and which ones it will really get to. I think it's going to be interesting to see what will happen. We have seen something happen, though. Eric Sable has dropped off of the back of the lead pack. He's now about a second behind Tyler Ducharme in sixth position. 1.1 seconds. The graphic is up on the screen showing that gap. And Gary has Eric Sable just lost his opportunity of being able to win this race. I mean, probably, but again, there are pit stops involved that could happen later, but like you mentioned, they don't really have enough time to think about that. But he may have, because even with pit stops, he's going to be pitting essentially with Chris Deshong, possibly. So hopefully they'll be able to work something out together. But right now, at the moment, he's pretty much lost, his, uh, lost any chance whatsoever at trying to win. Because, well, by the time they enter and they exit their pit stalls, well, the nine is probably just going to be just barely leaving his pit stop all the time. These drivers in front of him are already out of pit road. On to lap 150. At the end of this lap, we are three quarters distance into the Daytona 500. And Noah, these driver, for these drivers, the end is in sight. The last 125 miles, the last sprint to the finish. It's almost like on school sports day where you can see the finish line just ahead of you, but you've still got to run that extra five seconds to get there, and it will be the most painful five seconds of your life. Oh, that it will. It will be so painful for these drivers as the laps click away. That, that clicks away the opportunity to get to the front, and they're going to have to patiently be aggressive. I've been saying this all race long. It's, it's 
a weird saying that you have to time out moves to the second. You have to make sure where you're going is going to benefit you. And that's so hard to do in this latter part of the race because friends are thrown out the window. Unless you can get me to the front, I don't care about you. So if, I, if you can get me to the front, I'm going to drop down. I'm going to take whatever advantage I can get, whether that helps or doesn't help you. And that's just how it's going to be in the latter part of this race. Krista Shong has taken a risk. He has pitted after 28 laps. Means he's got to go 50 laps in this final stint. And I'm not sure that's possible, Gary. I think that Krista Shong has brought his car onto pit lane too early as we go past the, uh, the marker of three quarters distance and carry on through it. Has Krista Shong just dug himself a hole where he's got to make one more stop? Oh. Oh, I mean, I don't think we've seen anybody at this point run to about the point of uh, 45 laps. I mean, again, in personal experience, I mean, the most I could run is just barely about 39, 40 laps on the 500 that I ran this past Thursday. So that's uh, that's just from experience. I'm pretty sure there's no way that he could make it without one more stop. As well as the fact that with uh, 50 or 48 laps to go, I should say, these drivers are about 10 laps away from uh, possibly hitting pit road, maybe even less than that. So if they can somehow just just get a little bit of fuel, as there's a little bit of contact there with a few lap cars in the bag. Tyler Ducharme had uh, a contact with time to set there, but they managed to stay single file. But 10 laps left till most of these drivers should be coming to pit road. But it's just going to be really close. And even pit above 40 laps to go, maybe 45 laps to go just about 45 laps to go they might be able to make it if they have enough help or caution just to save a little bit more fuel well, i wonder whether that's what chris Deshong is hoping for get a caution and now he's in a prime position of being up at the front of the field this is a strategy call i think from him but at the moment it's looking like everyone is still very calm and noah this means that could it be that we're not going to see the aggressive driving that i thought we might have seen a bit earlier on until after these last stops yeah, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to see what it comes down to, see who it comes down to, which pack is in the front. Right now, this is a stretch. This is a stretch to getting to that pit stop and seeing where you come out and what, you know, what, that resets everything. Where, where, can you get to the win? Can you get to the lead? Are you behind? Are you hoping for a caution? It changes the whole playing field. And right now, these guys are just trying to make it to that point and hope that they're in position. For the number four of Connor Anton, I can see that he has a little bit of damage on his car, so maybe that fast repair will be used on the final stop, Gary, just to mean that he's got a clean car for the final run into the finish. However, he is putting all his eggs into one basket by doing that. If there is an accident where he picks up quite heavy damage, that could take him out of the race because of the dreaded meatball flag. As soon as that comes out and he can't repair the car, day over. Yeah, you just really have to hope for the best and hope everything goes into your favor at least for the most part to get to the end of this race because well at this point if you pit it well you're you can pretty much just kiss that race uh that chance of winning goodbye and especially for eric sable and krista shaw they're they have hooked up finally but again krista shaw they could have probably hooked up just uh before the show made his pit stop but unfortunately that's not the case so right now it's pretty much the top six including uh lap car the 30 of brad uh, brad bothwell you've seen in the formula 25 how lap cars do in terms of helping drivers out in the lead lap so the 25 may be getting a little bit of a taste of his own medicine uh at this point yeah and i wonder whether that's gonna play into someone else's hands i'm not sure of course being in the position of being able to pick up a lucky dog on the cautions is somewhere which every driver who is off of the lead lap wants to be. There are some drivers two laps down. That starts at Brad Bot Broth Bothwell, which is actually the number 30 car in this leading pack. So he won't be eligible for the lucky dog at the moment. If we get another caution, the driver who is, is Cameron Ledford in the 88 and 12. So 11 cars left on the lead lap. Noah shows how competitive this top 10 has been all race long. Yeah, definitely. And I believe if you're in that two, uh, two laps down position that you've kind of, it's just not going to work out for you. Uh, unfortunately, some of those cars brought up in that incident earlier are, are some of those that are in the that position of two laps down. But I don't see the opportunity of a wave around with all these cars pinning at different times. 
I don't know if the whole field would fit at the same time if a caution were to come out right now. Uh, maybe so, but it, it really would have to come down to the lucky dog position, and those two laps down aren't going to get there with so many, just one lap down right now. And I have a feeling, Gary, that we are into the last 43 laps of this event now. We are going to start seeing people thinking about hitting this leading pack as soon as the driver at the front, which is Nick Northrop, brings himself onto pit lane. Everyone will follow. You do not want to be left out on that race track on your own. And not at all. If you are, well, you can, again, just not say goodbye to your chance of winning, especially for within this uh, top group. Now, the thing is, for this pack, as well, I thought someone's going to make a move to the inside. Uh, pit road, they did not. 36 laps now on their stint for pretty much this entire top seven that's with us. They're just about lap, what, 42 at this point, 42 laps to go, so they're really going to be borderline if they decide to pit. So they have to pit again, just under 40 laps to go, and they'll be fine. So they have four laps to do so, but I'm wondering if they actually decide to pit this time, because if they do, well, they may just slightly jeopardize their chances for underestimate. Well, this is the 37th lap on this stint for all of the drivers from 1st down to 11th position. So it's going to be interesting to see if when people peel off, they aren't quite at the limit yet, Noah, but they've got to be thinking about how, when do I pick, when do I pick, when do I pick, because the fuel tank is going to be very quickly running down. You're powering a big thirsty V8 flat out around this Daytona International Speedway at 200 miles an hour every single lap. That fuel is going to very quickly drain. Yeah, definitely. And, and you're thinking right now of who you're going to be with, what you're going to do. Now, with these fuel, you know, with the fuel low, you'd think that you'd go for maybe four tires because it's only an extra two seconds. But here at the end, some may be thinking not because that two seconds is is valuable. As here they hear a few come. Oh. Only a few there, and that's exactly what I was referring to. Who comes? When do they come? Do they all come together? Obviously, we're seeing a mix-up. So we've got three cars onto pit lane. They are Liam Brotherton, Benjamin Nelson, and the third car, the number 30. That is the car in 19th. That Brad, that's Brad L. Bothwell. So he is two laps down, choosing to get his pit stop done now. If there is a caution thrown, Liam Brotherton and Ben Nelson are in a perfect position to be able to pick up the reins. Expect to see the rest of your field pit this time around. Looks as though Benjamin Nelson is going to be taking four tyres. He's back out, stop at 14.9 seconds. You can see the smoke ahead. That's Liam Brotherton. So Brotherton's going to get out ahead of Nelson this time around. We're going to see every single person from that lead pack onto pit road. All oh, right. Hunt sideways and he knocks oh, the cone off. Yep, he's around. He had to he had to slide on the brakes to avoid hitting the four, but now, unfortunately, he came in so hard into pit road that he just lost all traction on his tires. So that's really going to cost him. Ryan Hunt losing a lot of time. Replay on board with him. He'd lost that about 150 meters before the actual pit is um, the pit limit line there, Noah. And he, at that point, was a sitting duck. He did, however, manage to spin the car around and keep it going. No caution needed. Connor Anton has kept his damage, so the number four is going to stay damaged. The race off pit road, however, is won by Femi Olat. So Olat now back to the front of your field, Noah. And then, unfortunately, to make matters worse, Ryan ended up going into his box and sliding through it and having to back up. He's still actually sitting in his box at the moment. But, you know, that's exactly what I was talking about. How, what do they take? We've seen a lot of drivers take four. With the time that they have to fuel that car, I think that's the best decision. But these packs now into two, and that's really going to play a factor. Which one comes out in front? So Ryan Hunt, he's come out behind Eric Sobel, Sables. Sables going to get himself back into the top five. So it looks as though Nick Northrop has managed to get himself back up into the race lead on this opening lap. So Femi Olak, he might have won the race off pit lane, but he hasn't won it out on the circuit. 38 laps remaining now, Gary. This is where it starts to get aggressive. This is the final run to the flag. And this is the time where you can pretty much go almost all out. And then the actual closing laps, that's when you can definitely go all out. Liam Brotherton was a 10th across the line the last time around. This time by, now he's now 5th. So he's going to have a little bit of a run to catch up as he's got help from behind. The 79 of Benjamin Nelson and 30 of Brad Bothwell. Again, they pitted 
uh, just before these front four runners, which was the front five, but unfortunately for the uh, 4D of Ryan Hunt, who actually had to serve a penalty, I believe, for the uh, unsafe pit entry since he did miss it essentially. Uh, 20.7 seconds on pit road. Well, now it's going to be the top four. At this point, it looks like it's going to be the top six trying to race it out for the lead in these final closing laps. Watch out for Liam Brotherton. Watch out for Ben Nelson behind. They are going to close that gap to make sure that they can be there at the end. And Noah, we, we've said all along, Liam Brotherton, he's one to watch out for. He hasn't been a driver who's been sat at the front of the field. He's just conserved his fuel, conserved his tires, conserved his car, sat in the lead pack. We know he's quick, however, because there is a reason why he started on pole position, and there is a reason why he had the advantage of about half a tenth a second for that pole position. We know he has the pace. It's when does he show it in these closing stages? Yeah, and it's going to be very interesting. That group is, is more than likely going to catch this one. Uh, there's a little gap, and look, they're even making time now. But the move, when do you make it? When do you try? When do you attempt to go to that outside line and make the move to try to get toward the front? It's going to be something that they're going to have to time perfectly. And that could even be all the way to the finish of this race within a few laps to go. Is that when they make the move? Do they make it now? Do they, do they tuck in now? Would it be too late then? Uh, and, and then when you talk about the possibility of a big wreck is now he goes to the outside or attempts to with the 79 behind him. Uh, that possibility, I mean, the possibility of a big wreck is not off the table. Though with the pack space as it is, I feel like these drivers will try to stay as patient as can be until they get within the final few laps, meaning that it is a lot less likely, but we could always see a caution flag to stack these guys back together. And that beautiful static shot, a shot as your leaders head themselves through the tri-oval, showing the speed that these cars have. And I think it is, it's worth pointing out, Gary, that there's not many machines in the world that can do 500 miles at 200 miles an hour flat out. It's, they are incredible pieces of machinery. But also, compared to some other cars that we see in motorsport, relatively basic. Yeah, especially since uh, there's the whole entire category of not just road course cars in general, especially the uh, GTEs, GT3s. It's the entire class, LMP classes as well, so that's uh, a whole complete different design for different classes of racing, all racing at the same time in NASCAR. And the only difference they really have are just manufacturers, maybe a few engine differences, but that's just based on the uh, ruling of NASCAR and allowed within the ruling of NASCAR. But other than that, yeah, this is uh, a little bit basic, but there's the 10, the brother to moving up to the top side now. the United of Nelson. Well, decides not to go 100%, so Brotherton may be testing out a little bit of a run to see how far he can get alongside his drivers before needing a bit of help. And I've seen that from the last few laps. Brotherton is looking to see if there's a possibility that he can start to make his way forward. Connor Anson is looking as well, and this is where Brotherton's now going to start the challenge. He's moving up to the high line. However, no one's going to help him, so he's choosing to move back down low. I mean, Olat, though, he's going to challenge for the lead now. He's going to have uh, help from behind in the form of Tyler Ducharme, and Tyler Ducharme is going to give that little bit of a helping hand as a back marker ahead. Could have played into Femi Olat's hand, because Femi Olat, he's oh. ducked down to the inside. We've got a car loose, uh -oh. that's Tyler Ducharme, and there goes your stage one winner. There goes Nick Northrop, and there is the seventh caution of the race. And this changes the whole dynamic. And to think that actually number 10, he got clipped, but he slid sideways throughout the entire uh, turn four. He got pretty much both sides, both core panels, in fact, the car image. But the 25 and the 10 barely managed to make it through the Ford Anton was on the apron avoiding that. I don't think he got any type of a piece of that crash whatsoever. Neither did the 79. So that's really, those would be impressive onboard shots to see. But that is, uh, well, Femiola is pretty much the only driver along with the 4 and the 79 to really make it through that wreck without any damage. It's now going to be interesting to see as we see the replays riding on board with Ola. There was a slight touch between the 54 and the 25. And that was what started that one off. The 54 then just got pinched round into the wall. It's going to be interesting to see any, if any of these drivers come down onto pit lane to get the damage repaired. They must do. The fact that Femiola is staying down low, he's probably the only car without damage, as you said, Gary. 
and as he's going to bring himself back onto the oval. This could now promote the likes of Ethan Kurtz back up. He's currently sitting down in seventh position. He has got damage to the 12, but Noah, is this a case of now bringing in some of the people who are a bit further back? Eric Sobel, Ryan Hunt, people who we know are quick. They've now got their chances back. Oh, definitely. As we see some drivers peel off uh, many of those damage, Femio Lat still staying out. But this, this changes everything. This goes from a race with a pack of cars, just those cars, racing for the win, to now we're going to group everyone back together. Like you said, Eric Sable, a guy that I chose to win, he's been fast all night. He could, If he can get through there, now he has another chance. They were too far back to make any type of run at this point before the caution flag came out. Now he has that chance of lining up and trying to get back to the front. And I don't think pit stops. I think we can, we'll, we'll be able to make it from here. So that won't be a factor into this race. It'll be a straight out dash to the finish. And all of these cars will be grouped together. And everyone that is in a good, a good enough car to get to the front and can find some help is in contention. And I did say about Eric Sable getting himself back further towards, and then he decided to take himself down onto pit road to get himself a service in that number nine machine. So he's going to filter himself back out in 11th position in the, the mid pack. However, he is going to be on the inside for the start. So he maybe has a little bit more of an advantage. Femi Olat is going to be the car that's going to bring us round to the green flag once again. Currently around 2 hours and 37 minutes, 2 hours and 35 minutes into this race. We've got another 30 laps to run. We're going to run probably another 3 laps under caution here, Noah. So when we get back going, we're going to have about 20, we're going to have 27 laps to run in this race. But everyone's now bunched back up, back up. Is this where people get aggressive? And is this the point where we see the big crash? Oh, definitely. This is this is where everything has to be pushed. Nobody is friends with anybody unless, like I said earlier, you can get them to the front or help each other out. But no one is caring about anybody but themselves and getting to the front of this field. It is time to go, and I definitely think that we have upped the chances big time of a big wreck here in the loader, or latter part of this race, this little dash to the finish. And there's a few drivers now, been, I think, taken out of contention for the win. Nick Northrop has dropped down to 10th. Tyler Ducharme has dropped down to 9th. Eric Sable, 11th. Big names suffering all of a sudden. Liam Brotherton has managed to get out in 7th position and all use their fast repairs. So they're going to be starting just ahead of the mid-pack here, Gary. But they haven't got the failsafe anymore because of the incident we've just seen. Yeah, you are definitely correct on that, especially for the 10. He probably, he probably didn't want to uh, just sit there on pit road and chance it without uh, having the chance with no caution. But to think that we're on 30 laps to go at this point, as I had to think that over for a second, but we are. Femi Olot, well, pretty much here, uh, Femi Olot, uh, Benjamin Nelson, Ethan Kurtz, Anthony Emery and Ryan Hunt, they're all basically uh, running borderline on either making it or not making it. Because we have Benjamin Nelson on, he's going to be coming to 11 laps on his stint. The rest of the top four, Femi Ola, uh, Kurtz, Emery, and Hunt, well, they'll all be 10 laps on their stint as well. So, unless they're saving right now, which hopefully they are, they're going to be really close by the end of this race. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can keep up with your favorite drivers in the race for the final stages, the final 30 laps. Head yourselves over to racebot TV forward slash timing where you can access all of that. And do not forget, we are not done yet this weekend here on Racebot TV. Tomorrow we have two events coming your way. For all you Norwegians out there from 12 or 15 GMT tomorrow, we will be bringing you the Sim Racing Grand Prix. And from 9 p.m. GMT tomorrow night, Will Vincent and Jake Sperry will be heading to Barber for the 2K World Cup. As the lights go off on the iRacing pace car, I feel like Barber would be a good place for, for a race with these cars, guys, because it's a very technical track and would definitely prove some very interesting racing. Oh, definitely. It would, it would definitely uh, be out of the comfort zone for a, a number of these drivers um, who are just used to the likes of Sonoma and Watkins Glen. So definitely be a change, but it would be very interesting to see these cars there. As we are going to head these cars round to turn number two onto the back stretch. Just another 
27, 28 laps remaining in this race, and it's going to be the driver of Femi Olax bringing us round to the green flag. Gary, what's Femi Olax got to do to be there at the end of this race on victory lane? He always been doing, just stay up at the front, don't make any move, protect that top side as much as possible. And well, of course, uh, finish, well, of course, the most basic thing, cross the start finish line as the first person instead of, well, anywhere else, because he's done it in stage two. Well, I don't see why he couldn't do it for these final 28 laps. But again, fuel could be a factor, but hopefully he'll be able to make it. He just has to change lines and start on the top side. And that's an interesting switch because usually we've seen the leader go for the bottom side but this time he's gone for the top side as Femi Olat so maybe trying to run a different strategy however we have seen that that higher line for him even if it's running in the middle of the circuit has been running better green flag is flying we're back to racing at Daytona and look at the start that Olat's got he's flying off of the front of this field Noah he's back into P1 and he's got a nice advantage up at the front yeah, great choice for Femi. He knew that he would get that push right out of the gate, be able to clear that bottom line, and then not have to worry about anybody on the outside contending him on the restart. So a very good move by an experienced driver in Femi Ola to choose that top side and then to quickly clear down to the bottom when he can as we have a lot of single file starting to brew here in this pack. A lot of single file indeed. Still the first 18 cars covered in this first pack. It just looks as though it's everyone's trying to get down to the bottom, down to the lower groove. However, the 44 and the 27, Anthony Emery and Chris Deschong are trying to challenge on the top side. And it looks to be working so far for the 44 because he's got himself past Ryan Hunt. He's now challenging for Ethan Kurtz in third position. So this could be the move that, we want, that we're seeing, Gary, of the 44 and the 27 moving themselves forward in the pack. I think the point seven is going to be able to make it because remember he did pit a little bit earlier on before uh, the final 50 laps. He's on his 24th lap at the start finish line. And he gets to the start finish line. He'll be on his 24th lap. So essentially, he's running 50 laps on this. I don't think he'll be able to make it. He can try and help as much as possible, but there's no way he's going to get play into a major factor unless he starts going right now. But for the time being, well, that 44 is to try and take that 27 with him to the front as quickly as possible. Uh, so far, he looks as though he's dropped back just a little bit to 44 because he's still sat in fifth position. He was sat in fourth uh, at the start of the last lap. However, now he's dropped back just that little bit. Still up at the front of the field, Remy Olat followed by Benjamin Nelson and Ethan Kurtz which is sitting in third position in the 12. Ethan Kurtz, he's been a bit up and down all day, Noah. Started off up at the front, dropped back to the mid-pack, and now he's back at the sharp end of the field as we ride on board with him. This is the time that matters. This is the time you want to be as close to the front as you can. He's in a great position here that if anybody starts to make a move on that outside line and he feels comfortable with going to it, he can and it's using that outside line that is really going to play into his hands. The 44 still trying, still challenging to the outside. But he's still not making any progress. If anything, he's falling back because he's fallen back behind Liam Brotherton, who is now up into position number five. But Brotherton has now taken the lead on the high drive, on the high groove, riding on board with the number five. In, or sorry, the number 10 in fifth position. You can see already, Gary, he's got an overspeed heading into turn number three. Yeah, that 10 is starting to slowly make his way back up through the field again. Pull sitter. So he's definitely going to try and make that known. The 44 is going to be pushing him as much as he can to the front. His cloud cover is back once again for the time being. So it's helping cool the track again just a little bit. It's going to have to take a long time. But uh, 77 Fahrenheit is that track temperature at the moment. But look at this. This is actually helping third in line. And so they are alongside for the inside lane for Brotherton and Kurtz. So right now it's looking up pretty well. And right when I say that, 79, Nelson jumps up a lot. Moved to protect, I believe, for a second, but he decides against it. It's way too early on, I believe, is his thought process. And actually, that's played into the 79's hands very well because he's managed to now get himself up into the lead. So Ben Nelson will now lead us round to start lap number 178. And for Liam Brotherton, he's still trying, still challenging. And I think there was a little bit of bumping between the 10 and the 79. Femi Ola is still going to be classed as second position as they head themselves across the timing stripe. 
and into turn number one they go. Brotherton has lost his little bit of support from behind, but now we're seeing a lot more cars moving up into the higher groove, Noah, as Brotherton slipped back down to the inside. Yeah, and I was just going to make mention uh, a few laps ago about how patient, how non-aggressive these guys are being. And as soon as the thought ran across my head, we've had drivers pop up to that outside trying to make things work, trying to get things going. That worked for the 79. Everybody else falling behind a bit. Fimeo Lett still tucked into that second position. And here they come now again with a great, great run on the top side. They're going to have to keep it together as now it splits a bit. They need to keep that top line together to make anything work as now they all die for the bottom. We did just have three wide in the middle of this leading pack as they head them themselves over through the trioval. For Liam Brotherton, he's now up into third position. I still think he's my favourite to win this race. Pole position. He could, if he could round this out with the trip to victory lane, he would be a very happy bunny. I feel the bump drafting begins on the back stretch. Everyone starts to close up. Looks like a busy rush hour day on the M25, travelling home from London, and and it's not. It's the Daytona 500. It's the Daytona 500, the race which everyone wants to win. And at the moment, Ben Nelson, Gary, he's in that position. However, he's going to have to hold on for 21 laps. That is a very long time, especially here. Yeah, for this track especially, you have drivers directly behind you. Drivers that are constantly trying to make moves on the outside and get momentum. There goes the 48 and the 44 around. This is the big one coming off of turn number two. Caution is out. And that was the crash we were waiting for. Three drivers from the front have survived that one. Ben Nelson, Liam Brotherton, and Femi Olat. There are a lot of drivers involved. Replay up on your screen. We are going to see what causes this. Ryan Hunt, a little bit of a twitch because he's got touched the inside. That spat him up. And there we go. The Constantina effect is real. And we've lost two thirds of the field in that one there, Noah. And I think there's going to be a few drivers who are not going to be able to continue for the final 20 laps. Yeah, that definitely is going to really hurt a lot of the drivers out here that were banking on that last car or that last pit stop you know using that reset or having used it early on so that's definitely going to affect a lot of drivers and a lot of good drivers here we saw david shutt have a little bit of rear end damage damage i don't know if that's from this wreck but guys like david shutt and and brett Puncari or uh tyler ducharme guys that we've been eric sable guys that we've been talking about all day long involved in that one and their car is not looking the greatest right now so let's see how busy pit lane gets. Hopefully this will be the last caution we see in this event. The Olat staying down onto the apron, maybe showing that he's going to be going down onto pit lane. However, I would doubt it because he's now going to be very safe on the fuel numbers. We're going to be probably seeing cars from about P5 downwards coming down to get the damage repairs now, Gary. So everyone, if they've still got it available, this fast repair, this is what they were saving it for. And yeah, this is why, and this is why it could help out some of these drivers that save the fast repairs as far as drivers that are staying up at the front. Well, here comes Chris uh, Ducharme. I believe that's number 27, at least 27 either way. He heads to uh, Pit Road, or Chris Deshong, uh, rather. He decides to head to Pit Road. Finally, he knew he wasn't going to make it. He tried to stay up for as long as possible. Unfortunately, you know, that didn't play out into his favor. So a lot of cars getting new tires, a lot of cars getting a bit of a refresh. The iRacing Fairies are getting to work once again to repair a lot of these cars in times that any mechanic would dream of doing. And for those drivers, they're getting back out onto the lane. These long stops are actually telling me, Noah, that a lot of these drivers have, have already used their fast repair. They've now got to make extensive repairs to their car. This is going to cut down how many cars we've got running for the lead now. Definitely. And as we mentioned, this was the risk. This was the risk once we had that last yellow. We knew that things were going to get more intense, and they did. And this is the product of that. We have so many cars that we've talked about being up front all day long that will no longer be in contention as as Tommy Gossett and Eric Sable have, have taken their cars behind the wall. You know, guys that have been up front that we've been talking about all race long in the snap of a car turned around are just done for the day i'm looking at my timing screens i'm seeing the top l out on track i'm seeing 15 cars that aren't in the pits so gary we have just lost almost half 
the field in one accident. And for a lot of these drivers, it's day over, as we've just seen for Eric Sable, as we've seen for Douglas Carlson, and as we've seen for Tommy Gassett. Yeah, just so many drivers, unfortunately, involved. I'm pretty sure they definitely did not want to be involved. Sometimes you just have absolutely nowhere to go, but uh, next thing you know, you instantly regret using that fast repair that has been used earlier. And that fast repair is really what you want now. You are currently looking at your leader. Your leader is Ben Nelson. He's up eight positions on where he started. The biggest move for a shake, however, you've got to go down to seventh position. That is the number 77 machine of Austin Roberts. He is up 22 positions on where he started because he started 29th right at the rear of this field, Noah. He's now running within the top 10, and if he plays his cards right, he's got a good chance of even getting a top five or a podium. Maybe, just maybe, a trip to victory lane. Yeah, anybody that is still running and still has the car capable of getting through this pack at speed has the chance of becoming a winner here. And, and we haven't, we can still see another wreck. I mean, regardless on if there's four cars out there, there's still the, the opportunity for someone to make a mistake. And so we're far from done here yet. I think that anybody who's out there running has a chance. And I think it's gonna be a whale of a few laps that we're gonna see until we get this checkered flag. And it, it'll be very fun to find out who ends up with the podium finish. And that podium is going to be hotly contested for. Of course, the winner today will walk away with a lovely prize fund of $200 and a lovely shiny trophy. The only driver who can maybe win a little bit more prize money left in this event in contention is Femi Olat because he won stage two, so he walked away with a $25 prize. Nick Northrop who took stage number one, the number 54 machine. Unfortunately, it's going to be day over for him. He's still sat on pit lane getting repairs, quite extensive repairs to that 54 machine because there's a lot of body paneling missing. As everyone comes around to start lap number 184 of 200, we have 17 laps remaining. The lights have gone off on the iRacing pace car. So we are going to be back to green flag racing next time by Noah, and it's going to be a 16 lap dash to the finish. Now, do you leave it all for the fight, last five laps, or do you go now? That's a good question. You, I would say that you need to go now. It's the time to really get into position. Make smart moves, not dumb moves. It's not, you know, fly through there and, and take everything that you can. But it's, it's make smart moves. We have enough time toward the finish to really get going and to get yourself in a position to set yourself up. This isn't, you know, a, a few lap dash. This is enough time to really set yourself up for a good finish, and that's what these drivers need to do. And like you mentioned earlier, we have so many guys that we haven't talked about that have just patiently been riding around waiting for this opportunity. Who will win today's race? Could it be Femi Olat, who started 23rd and has now been up front for a number of laps? Could it be Austin Roberts, who 20, started 29th, and we haven't talked about that much? Anybody out there running, as I mentioned, is still in contention for this race, but it's time to go. It is indeed time to go once again here at Daytona International Speedway. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us for the Sim Racing Authorities Daytona 500. If you want to find out more information about what these guys do, check the links in the YouTube description. They will give you everything you need. We're back to the racing. Jack Styles, Gary Weaver, and Noah Lewis bringing you the final 16 laps of action here from Daytona. The pace car going to duck itself down onto the left-hand side. The field is in the control of the 79, and we're back to green flag racing. A little bit of a touch behind from the 48 to the 11, but the 11's got a good start once again on the high line. Going to get himself back in front of the 79 almost as they head themselves off the tri-oval. And I think for Femi Olak, that high line is going to be where he wants to stay. Ducks back down to the low side at the very last minute. Three wide further back in the pack. And look who's all of a sudden back up the front, Gary. It's the 42. It's David Shutt. Yeah, I was about to break that up. I was thinking, where in the absolute heck did that 42 come from? But something that I've noticed is that he, uh, David Shutt, Liam Brotherton, and 
Brent Funcari, uh, Brett Funcari, they all essentially have the best chance of finishing this race without needing to pit, or at least being close on fuel, uh, provided, of course, the uh, uh, drivers like Femi Ola and Benjamin Nelson have filled up their tanks and their last pit stop. They're going to be, again, borderline close by the end of this race. So the drivers that are on, well, now 16 laps of their stint are having the best chance at this rate. That's, again, provided and uh, the two drivers in front, some other drivers as well, about 20, uh, 24, 25 of their stints, let's provide they filled out their tanks all the way. So it's going to be just a very close finish here. So David Shaw has decided to back off from the tank for the time being. We really are into the final stages of this race. We have been racing for nearly three hours. We now have 14 laps remaining. The Daytona 500 really is a test of endurance on these drivers. Lots of things will now be going through their mind, especially for the drivers up in the top five. Everyone closing back up together as they head through the tri-oval. Once again, Femi Olat still at the front of the field, Noah, but behind, Ben Nelson's looking strong. So is Liam Brotherton, and so is Daniel David Shutt. David Shutt we've seen using the Highline a few times today and being successful. Yeah, all of these cars right now just waiting for the right moment to go. They've all got themselves in reasonable position of a possibility of winning this race. And so it all comes down to who will go with you. When do you go? It's still pretty early from the finish. I know I said you should go right off the start. But now that we've broken into two packs, this is a, a very small pack. And this lead pack is. And when you look at it, you know, you've really got to time it well or you'll go to the back quick and it's that timing which you have to get spot on. If you get it right, you are going to be onto victory lane. If you get it wrong, you could lose the chance of even a podium, even a top five, because the top six were all running together. And then we've got a pack from seven to 12. So two packs of about six to seven cars all running together. That's all we've got left out on the track. We have three other cars. Everyone else is out of the race, Snower, because of that big accident we saw, which caused that last caution. Yeah, and very unfortunate for the 44 Anthony Emery right off the bat there on that last restart, dropping way back. Uh, unfortunately, had a few issues with that car. Maybe he didn't un he didn't know about before taking the green flag, but he's now dropped very far back. And it's going to be who can be there at the end as we see one of the cars just dropping himself down on to the apron, the pink car. That's going to be the 77 of Austin Roberts, who is up the 23 positions now. Femi Olap, though, he's managed to get himself into the lead of this race. So the 11, back to the front of the field, Gary, managed to get himself past Ben Nelson. Mm, yeah, he's somehow, somebody managed to get by Nelson. So he's showing that not only was it just the stage, that's also the rest of this race. But that 10, again, he's the pole sitter that could move up to the outside. The 42 of David Shutt, as the 10 peaks up a little bit, David Shutt goes for sure to the top side, 77 back inside. So the 10, again, he qualified first in a single car run, and now Brotherton, not knowing where to go yet, he decides to move to the top side. They protect that top side as well. Will he go back down to the inside? Well, he's now stuck up on the top side, so everyone's starting to scramble for positions. And it's that final scramble for positions which we're starting to see form. The 79th leading the high line so far. Behind is the driver of Liam Brotherton, Austin Roberts in the 77, all of a sudden up to second position from in the back, the seventh position, sixth position at the back of this field. Everyone's now bunched up as well. So Noah, back to a 12 car field for the lead of this race. And how about that 77 of Austin Roberts? I mean, he, I don't know if it was planned, but he hung back grabbed a second group of those cars, and now he's gonna go for the race lead here on the top side, Austin Roberts. Where did he come from? Haven't talked about him all race long. He's now nosed ahead for the race lead. And it's all about who crosses the line on the final lap. Alexander Rossi did it in his rookie Indianapolis 500. He didn't lead any lap of the race apart from the very final one and that's the one that counts for austin roberts he's still got 10 laps to go however he's in a comfortable position he's sat at still at the high line however he can now duck down to the low side so emmy so for femi olat is just a case of slotting in behind the 77 now they can work together to try and pull away from the 79 the driver of liam brotherton in the 10 has been kind of left out and hung to dry although another car has just moved himself up that's the 24 of bobby cheney he's gonna get himself up into third position so everyone's still scrambling for positions austin roberts now um gary really having to defend but he can't do it well enough Rem 
Femi Ola back to lead this race because he's found an opportunity to get through. Oh. He's getting very close as they come off of turn number two, the 24. Two lines, three wide, two wide, three deep for the lead going into turn number three. No time for friends now. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I have no idea how the 11 didn't get wrecked there. I thought that he was going to get turned there off of turn number two. And again, everyone's still scrambling for position. This is off the first place. But the problem is, just like earlier on uh, in this race, the fact that people are leaving that middle lane open, and if they're going to be single file, leave that middle lane open, or the inside lane open rather, that's going to leave room for somebody to get by on the inside. But now it's a three-car train shoving Austin Roberts from first to almost third, but that 10 in Brotherton has absolutely no help on the top side. Now it's just a matter of getting in the right line at the right time as quickly as you can. And what a terrible position for Austin to be in there where he's pushed so far to the lead that there's nothing he could really do. You almost want to have two car, two lanes coming at you to fend off. But when there's only one lane, it only takes a, a great run like Femi Olat got for him to take you to the outside. And then you just have to choose top or bottom. Do I want to defend that top? Do I want to go to that bottom? Right now, he's hoping that someone will go with him to the top. Doesn't get it right then, but now he's going to try to squeeze out there once again. He's going to have another car coming along with him side by side now down into the middle coming out of turn number two. Can Austin get back to the front after such a tough position of being in from the race lead? He's going to need some help. Do not be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. The 03 car involved in this battle is not the car for position. He is one lap down. That is the driver of Nicholas Corcel in 16th position. Still up three positions on where he started. However, he is giving Austin Roberts the help he needs up at the top line. However, it looks as though Femi Olat still looking comfortable down at the bottom. Still got Ben Nelson. Still got Bobby Cheney on the back bumpers. Six laps remaining now in this race. Noah, it's getting close at the top. It looks as though the driver of Liam Brotherton slowly moving his way forward on the bottom as the 24 goes high. It's all getting a bit close coming out of Speedway 2. Oh, it's getting very close. This is the time to make moves. This is the time to do whatever it takes to get to the front. Right now, we see that 24 popping out of line, trying to take the 77 along with them. They're going to need more help up there. Everybody flooding to that bottom. When you see a chance of position, sometimes you take it. But what's really interesting as this new pack comes along here is that this lap car is going to play a key factor. He's got nothing to race for. So whoever he decides to go with, big advantage toward them it's now the final five laps of this race and gary i have a feeling that liam brotherton currently sitting in fourth position on the low line he's a side by side with the 24 as they head through turn number one i feel like he's waiting for a late race move if he can get a move done on the 24 he's got an easy pass onto the high line and then Dealey, he's got a drafting partner as he's going to go down to the inside. Everyone moves high, so it looks as though oh, everyone's trying to go for the high line. There's the accident, and the, is anyone going to be caught up in that? I think yeah. we're going to stay green. No, we're no. not. There's the big accident. Two cars, three cars involved in that. We're back under caution. With four laps to go, this could mean we finish under yellow. That is. That's the race because it's usually one lap to collect the field, one lap for a uh, for the pace car, or one lap for a lap down car to come out. Uh, to get the free pass and then two laps to green afterwards just to sort everybody through so that is unfortunately it I was about to bring it up as well is that under five five laps to go or less that is a, essentially called the point of no return now that when the caution comes out the race is over so so close was Liam Brotherton he was in the right position though to at least avoid that wreck but unfortunately though he won't be able to say he qualified on the pole and won the 500 Femiola however on a stage and now unofficially at the moment since the uh, checkers hasn't flown he's uh, unofficially on the 500 but now that i think about that and say that out loud will, will he have enough fuel to make it will he be able to make it? it's my question because he'll have to save a lot to make that i'm just looking at his stints he's done 36 laps on this stint 14 seconds stop last time which would tell me he took a full tank of fuel so i reckon femi olat he's got the fuel to get to the end if he hasn't that's going to be heartbreak for him he's had a storm through the field noah up 22 positions and i think he's just won the daytona 500 everyone's going to stay out on track as they should with four laps three laps to go and yeah race is over 
that's really it's almost it's a bit surreal knowing that we finished the 500 mile race and it all comes down to one caution yeah and, and as we mentioned i knew that femi was going to have his fingers crossed with with less than a few to go there um to hope that he can make that that are that the caution excuse me would come out with such a short time to go I'm not sure. I believe this will end the race, like we were saying. Uh, and Femi Lallat will probably be your winner here. But just, just the, you know, staying in front for those final laps. Once you cross that five to go threshold, and you're in the lead, your mentality is not giving that up because at any time, if the caution comes out, that could mean race over and you're declared the winner. And I think that's what we're looking at today. And I think for the driver of Liam Brotherton. It was just the wrong place at the wrong time, Gary, that made that made sure that he was in this position to maybe challenge for the lead. However, now he's got the problem of, wait, I'm now in a position of second place and we've got two laps remaining. Now, if, if the lights come off on the pace car with one, as we cross the line this time, we are going to have a one lap shootout, correct? They yeah, might, because I, I did see the lucky dog got sent around, meaning that we might have the lights go off this time by. And, yeah, so we might have a one-lap shootout. We could have a repeat of the E-NASCAR peak anti-free series, so it might not all be over just yet. If the lights do not go out on the iRacing pace car as they come around to take the green flag, or as they come around to finish this lap, it will be race over. They will come across the line. And the lights are on. The lights are on. So this is it. This is race over. And I have a feeling I can now confidently say that the driver of Femi Olat is your 2019 Sim Racing Authorities Daytona 500 champion. Oh, don't forget, he still has a couple more laps to make it through, along with the fact that he's trying to save fuel to make it through. So he's borderline again, but he'll be able to make it hopefully if he did fill the car up enough, and if he does coast enough as well. But either way, that is, uh, well, Brotherton was, yeah, you were right. He was in a position to uh, get into the lead. But unfortunately, though, that same position on the bright side for him, though, if he would have went up, same position kind of helped him out in terms of getting to the checker flag overall. And I think that uh, the Femi Lat riding on board with him right now, listening to his in-car, doesn't sound like he's coasting it or doing anything special. So I think he's got more than enough in the tank to make the checkered flag. And I'm telling you what, what a race we've seen here today. That those closing laps, how many guys were trying to get somewhere, which caused the wreck at the end. But these guys have just, the endurance of Daytona, the 500 mile race, seeing them battle to this checkered flag and what it would inevitably uh, end under yellow um, with a great, great prize of $225 for Femi Alat plus the trophy and the points. So just what a wonderful race. I've had such a blast calling it with you two up here in the booth. And I think any, anybody and everybody out there watching today. Of course, we want to thank you for tuning in to Racebot TV for the SRA Daytona 500. We still do have one more lap to turn here at Daytona. However, it is going to finish under caution. 500 miles, and it comes down to one incident through the final corner. And this, this is racing, Gary. This is what happens sometimes, and you can't help that. And I think for Femi Ola, he's definitely, obviously, advantaged off that. But what could have been? If we didn't have the big wreck that caused that second to last caution, could Eric Sable taken the taken the win? Could Tyler Ducham taken the win? There's so many drivers who were looking so good who got taken out by that wreck. I mean, we also even have Austin Roberts, who was uh, pretty much. I mean, he's still even though he wasn't collected. He's in third. I mean, we also have David Shot the nine earlier on in this race who's pretty much out eric sable he could have had a shot at this as well so there's many drivers that had a shot at winning this to the point where uh well unfortunately as i was gives a congratulatory bump there it was uh it all came down unfortunately to that one uh incident but other than that though it's amazing performance by everybody either way especially uh roberts and femi olaf they're the only two drivers within the top 10 
to start 20th or lower in a sense, uh, under position 20, and still finish in the top 10, let alone the top three. And it's it's that perse perseverance throughout a race now that really does make some of these drivers. Austin Roberts clearly didn't. Actually, he was one of the drivers who didn't even set a quality time, chose to start at the back of the field, showing that it's not all about the quality time that really does make this race. However, in just one corner's time, it will be official as to who will take the win here at Daytona. And that driver will be the driver of the number 10. That driver will be Femi Olak. He's going to cross the line to win the SRA Daytona 500. Alongside him is going to be Leah Brotherton. Started from pole and finished second. Wasn't quite able to make it onto victory lane. And our biggest mover and shaker up 26 positions is going to finish third. Austin Roberts in the 77. But the winner, Femi Olak, he's going to take away $225 of prizes. He's going to take away a beautiful shiny trophy and he is going to be able to brag for the next year that he is the SRA Daytona 500 champion. Now that everyone has crossed the line, we can take you through your final finishing position. Femi Olak taking the win after just over three hours of racing here at Daytona. Liam Brotherton going to finish second. Austin Roberts third. David Schott fourth. Brett and Carring fifth. Ben Wilson, what could have been for him just getting caught out at the end there, going to finish sixth. Rob Briss in seventh. Cameron Ledford coming back to finish eighth. Connor Anton ninth. And Randy Roberts in tenth. Gary, take us through the next ten. And eleventh is Anthony Emery Crook to Sean finishes in the 12th place position, 13th Brad Bothwell, 14th Nicholas Kressel, 15th will be Robert Dudley, 16th Bobby Cheney, 17th Ethan Kurtz, 18th is Ryan Hunt, 19th Nick Northrop, and 20th is Tyler Ducharme. Eric Sable, that very fast number nine machine, will finish in the 21st position. Tommy Gossett in the 22nd, James Callably, Kalabali in the 23rd, Garrison Hogan in 24th, Lachlan McMillan in 25th, Matt Simpson in 26th, or excuse me, Elijah Gracia in 26th, Matt Simpson in 27th, Riley Wyans in 28th, Jeremy Dominique in 29th, and one that did not grid today would be David Fish. He is scored in the 30th position. Check. As the donuts commence here at Daytona, we're going to step aside for just a few moments here on Racebot TV. But do not go anywhere. We will be back with all the race, the post-race coverage from the Daytona 500 for the Sim Racing Authority. Do not go anywhere. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks. Fully dynamic, real world cars. And over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $100,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Femi Olak bringing himself onto victory lane for the Sim Racing Authority's Daytona 500 presented by us here at Racebot TV. Just over three hours of racing, 200 laps, 500 miles, and it was all decided because of one caution, which meant that we finished behind 
the iRacing pace car. To start off with, we're going to be joined on victory lane by our winner, and that is going to be Femi Olat. Femi, first of all, congratulations on a storming win, up 22 positions. What was the secret today? Uh, the, secret, the secret was having Lachlan McMillan, Ryan Hunt, Nick Northrup, and Connor Anton to work with for a majority of the race. And obviously, this is just the beginning of the Sim Racing Authorities. I know that you guys have got a full season ahead of you. Obviously, no points awarded today, just the prize money, of which you're taking home $225 of the 250 available with the Stage 2 win and the race win. You absolutely dominated out there today. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a really great. Uh, you know how I mentioned that I worked with Nick Northrup throughout the race, so that's actually two fifty for us, and like we're gonna split like the stage winnings amongst like us five and you know other stuff. But yeah, it's uh, really great to win the inaugural SRA five hundred. I uh, I thought I would have a good shot of winning it, but I didn't think I would actually be able to last all two hundred laps and then come out on top after all that. Those last 10 laps were amazing. And obviously you survived the big wreck that caused the second to last caution and survived that final wreck because you were just ahead of it. You were you, you were already ahead of that crash. And I can reckon looking back and seeing that, especially with the big wreck, that must have been heartbreaking knowing that you've had, I know at least two of your teammates were taken out by that wreck. Yeah, the uh, second to last caution, I think it was just a product of, you know, this being a hard draft package to really work with. And uh, you just got to try to get everything you get. And I think it was a case of pinching that caused that. And then the last one, as I saw it happening in my mirror, I thought they saved it. And I was kind of screaming like, no, no, keep wrecking because the guys behind me were going to have a massive run. And I was going to have to mirror drive even harder than I had up to that point. But Thankfully, it came out, and good thing we don't have green-white checkers because I didn't want to have to sit through another three laps green. And obviously, one of the things which we were discussing in the final stages of this race was your fuel situation. You had the longest fuel run of anyone in the top 10, apart from one driver, which was Ben Nelson. So you were the driver who we were looking at thinking, is he actually going to run out of fuel on the caution, or were you okay for fuel numbers? Oh, I I didn't know that actually. Um, I was okay for fuel. Um, for this in the first stage, we pit as soon as the window opened, and you know people kind of caught on to it in the second stage, and um, you know in the last stage we just ran it dry. So I think I was pretty good. I didn't even look at that. And before we let you go and celebrate your win with your team, who would you like to give a shout out to as the SRA Daytona 500 champion? got to give a big thank you to you guys for coming out to broadcast this you guys are the uh, biggest group we've ever had broadcast a race and i think it's just really cool for the exposure of the league uh thanks to bobby cheney and justin gable austin roberts randy roberts all the admins because they put a lot of work into making this happen you know it's the first one like i said and it's great to win that first one uh big shout out to dead zone racing for helping me in the pro series they didn't come through but you know they have eight guys in peak that you got to help now and um Thanks to everybody who watched. I don't know how, what the peak viewership was, but I imagine it was really good because you guys are great broadcasters. So thank you. Femi Olight, your winner of the Daytona 500 today. Noah, you are stood by with the number 10, the car, who, the driver who finished second, and that driver is Liam Brotherton. Yeah, I'm here with Liam Brotherton. Liam, first of all, congrats on your second place finish today. Man, you've been, you were up there all race long. You started from the pole. Almost got the win here. What kept you up front for most of this race? Well, uh, it was a heck of a race. We had a lot going on. Um, didn't have too many teammates, and then a lot of them kind of got wrecked out. And it was just kind of playing strategy and then playing the lines, waiting for one lane to stack up, one lane not to, and just try to fight for the front the whole time. Well, man, you definitely gave us so much to talk about up here. We enjoyed watching the heck out of you uh, running down there on the track. Uh, what could you have done? Could you have done anything different to be standing in victory lane right now? Honestly, no. Uh, if I'd had a couple of hour laps, yes. Um, but I was making some moves there trying to get Ben, who I was working with, uh, a run. And then, you know, we were all just kind of mixing it up, and I'd get shuffled, and then I'd fight my way back and get shuffled. So. At that point, I set myself up good again. And I just needed them to not wreck, and they did. So uh, it's all good. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. So, 
Well, congrats again on your second place finish. You gave us so much to talk about, like I said. Is there anybody that you'd like to thank? Any sponsors, people out there? Obviously, I always got to thank uh, Slip Angle Motorsports and everybody over there for everything they do for me on Road to Pro and, and everything else. And i uh, got to shout out my design company, Phoenix Designs, that was on the car. If you're looking for a paint scheme, obviously just hit me up on Facebook. Um, but otherwise, it was, a, it was a great time. I always loved Daytona. Such a uh, thinking man's game. Just playing the arrow and uh, all the guys from SRA for getting me in the race, especially Delonte, kind of pulled this in last second. So it was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for broadcasting as well. All righty, man. Well, we truly appreciate you taking some time to talk to us. Congratulations on that second place finish. I believe Gary has caught up with the third place finisher of Austin Roberts. Gary? Yeah, I have Austin Roberts here, third place after starting, I believe, a 26 positions back as well. I don't even believe he qualified either. So that is uh, even more impressive in its own right. That, uh, you didn't uh, set a qualifying time, but you still managed to finish in the top three. So that was absolutely impressive. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we got stuck in the back early, and I rode around for 170 laps. Yeah, definitely seemed to... Uh, uh, yeah, definitely seemed to frustrate you. How was the uh, stints and what was your main strategy for the race? Uh, basically, uh, myself, Bobby Chaney, and uh, Nicholas Kressel, who was two laps down, we just uh, we just had to stay alive and which hope for a caution. And we eventually got one, and it, and it worked out well. And I got up front, and I had fun. It's been a while since I've done that. Well, uh, before we let you go, anyone that wants to give a shout out to you for your uh, fun the third place finish here for uh, S500? Yeah, uh, yeah, you guys for putting on this awesome broadcast. Uh, you know, Bobby for putting this on. Uh, all the admins, um, all, bas all the members of the league. You know, we we always put on a decent showing. I like to think, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Well, uh, thanks for your time. We're going to go ahead and let you go. Congratulations again, Austin Roberts, on your third place finish here for tonight. Thank you. And we're going to catch up with the driver who finished in fourth position, the number 42, David Shutt. He was a driver who was looking very competitive all race long, but wasn't able to get it done. David, you had a very strong day, but you just missed out on that podium. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a kind of a strange race. Uh, there was uh, money out there for the stage uh, finishes, so I was kind of racing the stages for the first uh, those first two, and then afterwards, uh, I got uh, there was some wrecks there. I got in a couple of them. Um, I dropped back, and we lost a draft. Um, and then we got a, a lucky caution, and we were able to get back up there. Um, we had one reset this race, and I, I never used it. I should have um, towards the end there. Because I think some damage must have just been affecting me. I couldn't suck up like I needed to, to be able to maintain uh, those front five cars or so at the end. But uh, it was a blast. Uh, I'm glad I was able to uh, race this race. And obviously, some really stiff competition out there, and it's it's setting the tone for your for your whole series this year. I know it's the first Daytona 500 that you guys have had with this league, and. It's been pulled off absolutely brilliantly, if you ask me. It's the sun starting to set at Daytona. You just about missed the nighttime running. But was it nice knowing that as you got further into the race, it was starting to get darker and the sun was starting to shine into the car? Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I felt like uh, once it started to set, the track changed. I felt like uh, that the second lane, it was, it was harder to get a run going. So... Um, I honestly felt like it kind of made the racing or the draft package a little, uh, a little worse once the sun went down, but, um, uh, it's hard to tell, but, uh, yeah, it would have been cool actually to go all the way into the night. Um, that's kind of my favorite time to race. So, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good run. And before we release you back to your team, who would you like to give a shout out to today? Yeah. Uh, first off, just want to thank, uh, all the staff at iRacing uh and uh, sra for putting this uh on you guys for showing up uh helping us out showcase our league i appreciate it um and also uh, i'd like to thank v2 design for uh, uh sponsoring me um debuted the car tonight that we'll be using next season so uh hopefully we get some better luck and get some more wins david chuck fourth place finisher noah lewis you've called up with the final person we're going to give an interview to today that's ben brett punkari and he finished in fifth 
Brett Pankari, you are the fish, uh, fish, fifth place finisher here tonight at Daytona. Man, I know it's been so long since we started that uh, this race tonight. Starting 13th, finishing fifth. What did you need? What did you use to get to this top five position? Well, basically, at the beginning of the race, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. It depended on where I qualified. Had I qualified maybe on the front row, I would have tried to stay and brawl at the front, but I knew I was like mid-pack. I was like, mm, I don't know if I like being up there. So I just said to heck of it. I just stayed in the bag as long as I could. I mean, I got lapped when we had that long green flag run there on the second stage. But that's what I kind of wanted to do, like the back, even though it's so hard to make state of the draft in these cars. But eventually we got that caution late um, when I was in the group with uh, Cheney, Roberts, and those guys. I got me back in the lead lap, and it was pretty much showtime after that. or was, Either that or I was going to be in the fence somewhere or over the track. Um, but I just figured... It was time to go then, and I stuck with Randy Roberts as long as I could. I, I thought we were caught up to them. I went to the outside of them. I was like, uh-oh, we're not close enough. But got up there. Um, I probably may have tried to do something to get to the inside maybe later on in the run, but fortunately I got through that last wreck, and here I am with a top five. Well, yes, great job uh, fighting that adversity, coming from one lap down to finishing on in the top five here at the Daytona 500. Tell me, you mentioned the draft. Was it hard to maintain that draft? And as the tires wore, as the run went along, what did the car start to do? How was the car driving throughout this duration of the race? Well, for me, it's a little different because I was in single file lines though most of the time, or a little bit single file. And if you're on the very end of a pack, you got to be like within maybe 0.1 second of the guy in front of you. Otherwise, you're going to slowly start to lose ground unless you have someone behind you. So being at the very back of the line is not the best place to be. And the only other way to maybe get, to get a better draft, especially on the outside line, you have a bunch of cars and maybe they start pushing. Because if you get the right combination, you can actually do kind of do bump drafting and lock bumpers a little bit and get kind of a launch off of them. But... Um, yeah, it can be hard to stay with these cup cars compared to any other car. Like the Xfinity cars, it's a lot easier to stay with the pack, but with these cup cars, it's unfortunately not. Yeah, definitely. Well, once again, Brett, congratulations on your fifth place finish here at Daytona. Is there anyone you'd like to thank before we send you away? Well, first of all, thank all the sponsors, you know, the United Colors of Benetton, Gillette Shaver, Sanyo Casey Designs, Riello, Mobile One Lubricants and 7-Up. Um, of course, here at Blue Goose Racing, we're not afraid to experiment. That engine in this car is a 34-year-old Ford Cosworth DFV engine from 1988. And, of course, but we're also not afraid to experiment with other engines. we got a, our Toyota Camry. has got a Ferrari Hybrid. Our Camaro's got a Peugeot engine. We're not afraid to experiment here at Blue Goose Racing. But, of course, thank you guys at Race Spot TV for even broadcasting our race here. I've really admired what you guys have done at the Peak Series and all those guys and just an honor to race in front of you guys at race spot tv also big thank you to sim racing authority for allowing me to be a part of this of this league and be running with some of these guys like in the peak series like ben nelson tonight and um and one final shout out i gotta thank um even though it's on the sponsor my camaro uh, i gotta thank everyone helene photovoltaic modules um we make some of the better so best solar panels in northern ontario but also at plant minnesota and i just so glad to be working with those people and uh definitely appreciate them well we so appreciate you uh talking to us here brett and congrats once again on that fifth place finish jack all right thanks that's about all we're gonna have time for here today from daytona thank you very much for joining us here on race spot tv and on iRacing live for the sim racing authority daytona 500 of course before we disappear we should give a shout out to the people who get it done first of all to Mr. Van Balau, trackcams22.com and Andreas Werner for who designs our overlay development is all done by Simon Grossman and the live timing and scoring was provided to you by Nick Thisson the two people beside me have been Gary Weaver and Noah Lewis I have been Jack Styles. Hugo Lois has been behind the camera and until next time we bid you a fond good night